This is the UGA Sports Watch Along Show for the top ranked Georgia Bulldogs against Missouri. I'm Dane Young. This is Rodney Nabolsi, but you are here to hear Jim Donnan, the former Georgia head coach and the college football Hall of Famer. We are your second screen experience for the Georgia Bulldogs during their games. So get Georgia on your TV. College game day is on right now. And once the game gets going, we'll sync up with you. We'll tell you what time we're seeing on the screen in front of us. And then you can hear our commentary rather than what's going on um, with the broadcasters over at ESPN. Roddy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of sitting here. I'm always jealous of what Coach Donnan brings to the show. He, always, oh. he tells you what's going to happen beforehand. He tells you why things happen. Hell, he breaks news during the show. And I consider myself the luckiest person in the world to sit here next to him and do the show. But I'm really ticked off this week because he outdressed me. He's got the, the great shoes on, got the Jordans, got the new pullover. Coach, you're looking fly. The team's looking fly. Uh, it's, it should be a – I don't want to say walk in the park because I always worry about injuries. You know, I always got to have one thing to hang my hat, my worry hat on. I want, want everybody to get through safe and sound, but this should not be that much of a contest. Yeah. You know, when you play in your rank number one, you got to come out with your road suit. So uh, <laughs> I basically uh, broke it out a little bit today, but uh, you know, fortunately for me, I got a few of those left, but uh, f from the standpoint of playing a team you're supposed to win, we talked about it against Vanderbilt. You know, the preparation during the week is, a, is the issue, Roddy. If you yeah. really take it uh, serious and have uh, a good plan in your uh, mind mentally and uh, physically prepared, then upsets usually don't occur, even if you make some mistakes. But when you flip around all week and don't really don't do what you need to, and we've had some adversity this week. I mean, any way you look at it. Yeah. Uh, losing two five-star players, I get for many team are certainly uh, is, is certainly a, a setback and It'll be a season uh, for some people. And we're uh, in a situation defensively where we've got a key cog there. I mean, he's going to be harder to replace to me than uh, the, even though Salyer's a really good player. But there's not many guys in the country like Adam Anderson, that no. that Tibdo guy out at Oregon, maybe. But he's just a force off the edge, can drop, can do a lot of things. So. They're going to mix and match some guys in there, but uh, he's he's in a tough situation right now. Uh, you know, I'm a parent, have uh, two daughters. You just don't know what the situation is. I mean, uh, certainly everybody's innocent until proven guilty, and he's got a, a tough road to hoe because, uh, you know, these uh, police departments, wherever they are, have a tendency to drag these out to make sure, which is good, but, you know, when you're – Kirby Smart, you, you can't play a guy that's got that hanging no. over his head, even though it's it's not, uh, you know, you could say, well, hey, let's wait and see what happens. But you just really can't. But And in Salyer's case, uh, Broderick Jones has been working hard all year, yep. uh, is a really good, solid player. And this is a team that has given up more rushing yards than, uh, than anybody in the country. I mean, they've really had a hard time <laughs> stopping people. I saw an interesting stat yesterday, which – uh, really kind of got my mind blown. Uh, Missouri against the, the University of Tennessee gave up more yards in the first three quarters of that game than Georgia's defense has given up all year. Wow. So look for the dogs to run the ball at Will, at Tom, at Dick, <laughs> at Harry. They'll run the ball a lot of different ways today. Do you even throw it today? And and we, we'll throw it. I mean, it's a little cooler out there than I like. But and the thing about it, you haven't been used to being cold. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's not that cold, really. I mean, if, if it was November and you'd practice in it, you'd say, "Hey, it's uh, walking the park." But it, it, it's a definite thing. But the one point that I made on on uh, our show on Tuesday that really got my attention about this game when I on the opening, I said, "You got to prepare." Uh, usually, we just do Monday a very short practice, a little loosening up walk through to go over their fronts and stunts and everything and, and their offensive sets. But uh, when I got over there Monday and I was going over there to check on uh, a, uh, a situation where my good friend Nelson Bowers has donated a crowd therapy machine for the mm -hmm. athletic department and they're putting that in and wow. it's almost finished. And it's going to be great. It's going to be one of the unique ones Wait, in the he country. he donated this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of money involved, <laughs> but at the whole point, you know, most people put one person in a cryo machine. This right. one has four. You can put four at a time. You can put your whole body in, and you can, you know, so it really is. Uh, I mean, it could it could probably help you, Roddy. I mean, it probably, 
<laughs> probably probably wouldn't be like a frontal lobotomy or anything, but it would help you. But for getting back to that Monday practice, it was like we had lost the Florida game to me. I mean, the intensity of the of the really? coaches, the players, uh, they had on shoulder pads. I mean, they usually never wear shoulder pads on Monday. So we kind of stole that day as far as getting some more prep. And then they were able to cut back as the week progressed. But Kirby Smart, a master, a master at uh, really having a psychological edge. And he let everybody know right now he wasn't flip-flopping around on Monday. And we've talked about it, too. On our on all these podcasts, Dane, that Georgia going against each other all week is as tough as they see on Saturday. So, kind of a self survival thing, isn't it, Dane? Well, it's you know one of those things that we've talked about with the offensive line that Georgia has not pass protected as well as it probably will need to, you know, against some of the best teams in the country. And then some people say, well, Georgia's only given up four or five sacks this season, but what are they doing in practice against the best defensive front in the country? And so I, I think that that's indicative of what you're saying. What I want to know, though, Coach, are you going to give that cryotherapy machine a try? Are you going to get in there? Most definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've tried the other one. I used the one they they had, a, a, you know, a single one. This one's also electric, uh, so it's not gas operated. Uh, I, I was actually had a chance to go to the one in Chattanooga when they were uh, showing it to the Georgia staff and uh, – it's just, uh, you know, around the country, it's, it's a way of uh, really rehabbing and coming back quick. And, you know, a lot of people are running marathons like Roddy's getting ready to do, uh, can uh, can prepare for that, you know, building up your uh, your system. So I'm not just doing a plug for it. I'm just telling you, it, it just goes to show you George is on the cutting edge of everything, uh, physical therapy, everything that you can do to help your athletes. And uh, we don't we don't have anything uh, we don't ha have any issues on any anything that you need to get you ready same thing with eating uh, i mean uh, Collier Perno does a terrific job and uh, and what we're going to have with this new cafeteria is we're going to have uh, you know, you know s several chefs and they bring in interns uh, for for the uh, being in that kind of area, just like you do for athlete, you know, for for weight training and everything else. So we're we get these schools of culinary. Is that the word? Yes, sir. That they send uh, a couple interns down to work with the Georgia people too. So that's two extra people that Collier can train, but also get an idea to help our athletes. So, and we certainly don't worry about eating too much. No. I mean, <laughs> our, our kids. They eat well and they deserve it. I mean, you got to get their bodies ready and get them going. Coach, you may not be doing the plugs. I want to do a couple of quick ones, though. First, if you're watching this, please take a moment and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, if, if you're watching on Facebook, that's great, too. But maybe consider going over to, to YouTube and just clicking subscribe on there. We've got a goal on our site. We want to get to 20,000 subscribers. Uh, we're, we're at 19 and change already. So we want to get to 20,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel before Georgia plays in the SEC championship game. I do. Coach talked about uh, Nelson Bowers and his contribution to UGA. I'm sure that thing wasn't cheap. You know, four, four person uh, cryogenic chamber. The cryogenic stuff is fantastic. It helps with recovery. Uh, that is the buy-in that I'm seeing around town, the buy-in that I'm seeing from the supporters, uh, two of which are sponsors of our show, Athens Ford. Ryan, Lucy, and the folks out at Athens Ford, huge sponsors of our show. Without them, we would not have one. So thanks to Athens Ford. If you need a new or pre-owned vehicle. Been with us, both of them, since day yeah. one, too. Yep. Check them out. And then, of course, uh, Leon Farmer over at um, uh, Leon Farmer Incorporated, the folks that uh, one of the best distributors in the world. And they uh, uh, sponsor the show. And right now, we're, they said, hey, I said, what do you want to put out there? Do you want to put Bud Light? What do you want? They said, the Bud Light seltzers are red hot. So I am... A big fan of the Bud Light Seltzer. Going to get to drink them all during the game. So as my my mediocre content gets worse as the game progresses, but I'm not out of it because these things only have five percent alcohol. So, and today I'm knocking back the Apple Crisp. It's the new um, Fall Festival selection. And then I'm going to move over to the toasted marshmallow. I'm going to have a good day. I think George is going to have a good day. I think Kirby Smart's going to have a good day as long as everyone again stays healthy. That's my number one thing. I just want to see yeah, it. You just got sure. too many guys. Uh, Here's a healthy. You got some guys coming back. Yeah, we do. Uh, I, I think the fact that Arian Smith, and I think you'll see him early today with some misdirection and some deep balls. 
uh, really should help us on the perimeter. Burton has looked good in practice, number seven. Uh, he's a go-to guy. But, again, the, the running game uh, should break the line of scrimmage and, and get some big plays today with Cook and uh, White and McIntosh. I think you can see a lot of that. Also, some uh, – you know, we've run some sweeps against lesser teams with, uh, you know, Brock Bowers, Brock Bowers coming in there like he did against Vanderbilt because he's always in motion to block, and then all of a sudden he's in motion, you <laughs> hand him the ball, and it's a real good little concept there. But the number one thing that our team is looking for this week, though, uh, even though we won that game, you listen to Kirby in his press conference on Monday, is we made more mental errors than normal. We yeah. made uh, some mistakes at the point of attack, uh, also some coverage bust. And, you know, it's always good if you're going to make them to do it in a winning cause. And sometimes when you're playing in a big game like that, you have a tendency to overreact and do things, Roddy, that you probably wouldn't normally do. So hopefully we can eliminate some of those mental errors today and uh, don't stop yourself. You know, that's what you always got to do. Uh, one thing I would like to mention here from a personal note, playing the Missouri Tigers, and we have some people in Missouri that are friends of mine that watch the uh, watch along because uh, I've told them about it, and that it's not like there's a lot. But uh, one of the guys that I coached for, he was a head coach at the University of Missouri, Warren Powers, passed away mm. on Wednesday night, and he was a real good uh, mentor to me. He gave me a lot of, uh, of responsibility early in my career, which really led me to getting a tremendous opportunity at Oklahoma. His wife, Linda, recently passed away too, but both of them really good to me and my family, and uh, rest in peace, Warren Powers. We will uh, pass our prayers and condolences on to the Powers family. My, you're always good about uh, remembering those who have helped you on your way up. You know, I think that's uh, one of the lessons I've learned from you is not to look down on anybody, not to uh, you know remember those who helped you and never take advantage of the people who are, are working for you. I don't do extend that as far as Dane. Um, that's uh, hey, as long as the checks come in, I don't really care about yeah, the words. Check, no, we got good people now. You know, <laughs> we got a good good staff that work with us. But uh, uh, we were really really close at Missouri when I was there. Beat Oklahoma a couple of times. Had Nebraska the first year they beat Nebraska before I got there. Had them on the ropes. Uh, it just trying to get over the hump. You know, you see all these teams like Kentucky. Uh, Arkansas, Ole Miss, all of them, you know, they, they need those wins to get, get over the hump and your own players prove that you can do it. And uh, that's what Missouri is able to do early under Gary Pinkle there when they came into the conference. Right. You know, they oh, won, yeah. back -to -back won the conference title. championship two years in a row uh, as far as SEC East. But now with a new coach, uh, Coach Drink, uh, you know, really had a pretty good year last year when you look at it. They won yeah. two, two games on the last play of the game, though. Ended up five and five and uh, didn't go to a bowl, I think, because of some something that ended up happening. But uh, a lot of talk around town, and I'm going to just get to it, about quarterback play and all that. You know, Stetson Bennett's done a good job for us. He had a couple bad plays last week, but he had a lot of good ones. Uh, I think we'll see some of uh, JT today. He certainly seems ready, and, uh, you know, he's very capable. But uh, the big deal for us is get off to a good start, uh, Give you a little scouting report on Mizzou. Great running back in this baddie kid who's a really, uh, you know, got over 250 yards last week. Their starting quarterback, uh, Basilak, is out today. He got hurt against Vandy. They're going to probably use a combination of two guys. One's more veteran guy that plays a lot like Basilak, and then they have the other more athletic guy that, you know, runs the zone read and all that, that, that – kind of like we saw with Emory Jones last week. But our staff is prepared for that. We'll be ready. Uh, I look for him to rock the sky, Batty. I think he's going yeah. to – they're going to gang up on him. And, uh, you know, uh, this is one of those games where I think Mizzou can score some points, though, because they're going to uh, – you know, they're going to take some chances. This guy's a good offensive coordinator. Look for a lot of tricks and razzle-dazzle stuff from them. They're going to try everything they can. You know, they're outmanned. I mean, yeah, look at, the, you know, if you're outmanned, you got to do something. Uh, I know here on the screen here, uh, uh, they're showing these reads where uh, where uh, Bennett's keeping the ball. I'll be surprised if he does that much today. <laughs> I don't want him to get hurt. No, no, no. Uh, he, he might do it occasionally, but 
our backs are going to – that ball's not going to be too heavy for them. They're going to yeah. be able to run it today. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here, a big limb. We, we could have 300-plus rushing yardage. Missouri is ranked uh, – oh, there's a kickoff for those trying to uh, match it up. You want to tell them how to do it there? Yeah, we'll wait for Missouri to get on the field and take the snap. Uh, I, I do want to mention quickly – uh, the, there are a lot of Atlanta Braves that are at this game, from what I understand. Uh, I've already seen Blooper, the mascot, uh, walking around campus this morning. But Jock Peterson, I know, is there. I think some others will be there as well. Uh, so the championship spirit of the Atlanta Braves rubbing off on Georgia and Athens. And uh, Mark Rick called the dogs. And he'll be honored at halftime. So that's nice. I got to give Mizzou credit. Those are really bad looking uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that is that – they look like – I mean, yeah, those are all like a high school version of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They, th th those are awful. They're yeah. going with the athletic kid making here. All right. Uh, Missouri taking didn't. the snap. Oh, yeah, you're right. A lot of a lot of stuff going on there, coach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, they got those uniforms from Don Ferro back in the 50s. <laughs> oh. uh, we had this right here as a dual threat kid, uh, yeah. Tyler Macon. Uh so they got they got a freshman and a redshirt freshman. Think about yeah. it. Your your first start as either a freshman, redshirt freshman is against this defense. Yeah, I mean that's kind of a coming out party you don't want to have. This is, <laughs> Good this, luck, kids. This is like Halloween, but a week later. Yeah. Second and ten. There's fourteen fifty four in the game clock. There's what he can do, yep. boy. Fortunately, he ran out of bounds, but the guy's got some quickness he, now. He's got wheels, absolutely. Coach, it's on that first play on the Georgia sideline, the kind of big sheet that they had behind Dan Lanning. What's the point of that? Just to try to keep him from uh, disguising his signals. 1434, 1433, 1432. Good call. That was a great call. You know, they're, they're going to attack you now. They do a good yeah. job. And we got to be – you got to think that – if your coach drink and Georgia's all geared in on this back, they've run two deceptive plays to him mm -hmm. and made yardage with it. You know, I mean, they faked the uh, inside zone and he kept it and did the wrap around where they had a guy pulling to help him block. Uh, I was worried about this athletic kid, but I also think he could turn it over. This could okay. be a quarterback draw on a New York man. Hey, that's a that's the illegal procedure there. You can't snap the ball, buddy. Even though you got those uniforms on. <laughs> Big Russ says that they look like the Valdosta Wildcats out there. They do. Yeah. I was about to say it looked like a high school team, but I couldn't think well, of who it was. You know, Valdosta looks good in their uniform. But, I, I mean, Missouri's got some beautiful black and gold. And yeah. Just, uh, hey, I'm – that hurts me on the tradition of Missouri right there. Yeah. Marvin Babb says there's a big difference along the line of scrimmage on size. No right. question about that, Marvin. But – this kid running the ball is going to be the key for us. 13-41, 13-40. Ooh, way oh. to get out there, Walker. Trayvon Walker was waiting on that, Coach. Clay was ready, too. You know, you always count on the other team stopping himself a little bit, and that first mm -hmm. penalty really hurt them because they had a couple, you know, good move there with the first down. They got a pretty good uh, tempo here, too. Notice the difference in their their deal. They call the play to the lineman in the huddle, and then they come up. Whereas most teams will go up and talk to them at the line. You know what right. I mean? So they. So who has a slot right there? It's about time for them to give it to Batty. Yeah, they. How <laughs> you call that? Trayvon Walker. That's yeah. He's he set the edge on the right a second ago, and they just did it on the left there, coach. He's. he's I all can over tell the place. you this right now, going out on a limb here. They're going to do one of two things. This guy's either going to throw it really deep or he's going to run the quarterback draw. Third 19, 12 41, 12 40 for those syncing it up. You know, we're trying to know what the game clock is 12 37, 12 36, 12 35. Ooh. So it's loud. third and 19 for the Tigers. Loud crowd. Even for a we new game. It. You see, Robert Beal is uh, on the other side, Nolan Smith. Okay. Wasn't a draw, but it wasn't a first down either. No, I just don't. I don't like that call. If I'm Missouri, or I'm, I'm a Missouri fan. Hey, you going against number one team in the country? Uh, you're not. You're not going to stop. He he obviously made a mistake there. Yeah, I was about to say you don't. You, why do you hand it off on third and nineteen? You're going to pick up nineteen against this team? Yeah, well, you want to take care of the ball too. But yeah. I mean, throw it deep. The punts intercept it. But yeah. 
We're gonna have the safe. We're gonna have the safe pun on here because you know, worry about the fake. But Mizzou did what they needed to. They kept the ball for three and a half minutes. <laughs> Ooh, well, I thought that was gonna be a block. I did too. It's hard to hard to go after it on uh, middle of the field though, because you, you know, chance of a fake. I just think somebody missed him coming in. Yeah, yeah that was. A, we can see that happening again here. Uh, All right. Uh, Coach, what I started to say earlier, and then I started talking about our sponsors, but the fact that uh, Missouri is ranked 130th out of 130 teams against the run. They is that the same thing as being last? Like I'm just I saying, for <laughs> last, I don't want people to understand the sheer number of teams. 129 teams stopped the run better than them. Yeah, they, they're, they're right just, now. They're ganged up on the run here. Oh, yeah, they are. Big, I don't know if we can block all those guys right there. Two tight ends. That was white. eight in the box. You're right, Coach. Yep. They knew we were going to run it, so they came off the edge. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you can't stop it, move around. Yeah. Here we go, play action, dogs. Second and 11. Notice we're using the wristbands here, so let's get the right one. Yeah. 11.06, 11.05, 11.04. We're in the first quarter. James Cook flanked to the right of Stetson. Now Atlanta. they're playing yeah. – uh, Playing more conventional. There it is. Coach, was that an option to toss to Cook on the right side? Yeah. You, it's a two-play. You can either run the quick pitch or throw the backside slant. Because I look, Brock Bowers had no intention of a route. He, he's blocking yeah. at the beginning there. Well, he's faking so he can look like the quick pitch, and then we've got the wheel route to uh, Washington down the boundary. Yep. Which I can see is going over the top yeah. right here. They think we're going to run it. They doubled Washington. Two guys went after him, Coach. Well, next two to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, they, they jumped that snap call, too. Why did James Cook go from the right side of Setson Bennett to the left there? Better angle to get the handoff, I think. Yeah. Nice. There's maybe uh, elementary questions for a coach, but I think some people may have them, so. Give yeah. me some elementary. <laughs> nah, I, 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 this is all stuff that I, I – you don't know how much you don't know until you sit next to Coach and he pulls this game apart and picks the plays that are going to happen before they do. I hope we don't miss this play that they just showed the replay on. No. we got a tighter split here so we can yeah. uh, maybe yeah. throw an inside route. A.D. Mitchell's out there. Nobody open there. It's going to Arian Smith. Good to see you number 11 out there again, Coach, with the fastest guy out there. But look looked like yeah. he got uh, mauled a bit. Good protection. Also, like he didn't – off the line, I mean, I saw it for a brief second, but it looked like he didn't get much separation off the line of scrimmage. And he got up asking for a flag. It looked like he'd been tackled or something. Not a good angle on it from the TV thing there. But you, you did say we'd see Arian Smith early and yeah. <laughs> first try. There's Arian Smith. Cook, get it. McConkey, A.D. Mitchell. They're going to light us up here. Throw it away. He was out of bounds, I think. You got to give Missouri credit. I mean, yeah. they've come out here and uh, really did some good things the first series. I mean, ganged up on the run on first down. Uh, you covered us pretty well. Yeah, good coverage. It's a fourth and seven punting situation for Jake Camarda. There's the Golden Girls. I got some Golden Jackets on. It's, it is yeah. cold out there. Roddy, in this next time out, I want to touch on. Um, Missouri's recruiting a little bit in Eli Drinkwitz, especially coming off the, the Luther Burden commitment. We can talk well, I guess we can do that now as they figure this clock situation, get this punt off. Nope, they're staying on the field. Yeah. Okay. Fourth and seven. There's 924 here in the first quarter. Oh. A lot, of, a lot of yards Georgia doesn't usually give up on special teams. Zoo coming to play. 
Is that poor angles, Coach? What happens? Well, it missed tackle there. I mean, yeah. he lost containment the first guy down. I don't know if that was a center or who it was. It wasn't a gunner. They're going over the top here on the first play. Yeah. But what I want to touch on, Roddy, is Missouri's underperformed on the field this season. I think – I don't know where their expectations were, but I don't – their defense obviously has issues, and offensively I don't know that they're as explosive as they want to be. However – Eli Drinkwitz is proving to be a pretty solid recruiter for Missouri in yeah. a really tough conference to recruit him. Yeah, they have the number 17th ranked recruiting class in the nation right now, which is uh, a lot of that's boosted by the fact that they pulled in Luther Burden out of uh, East St. Louis and the number one wide receiver in the nation. Uh, they got Sam Horn, the uh, quarterback out of uh, Swanee, you know, Georgia kid. Uh, he's been committed, uh, let me look it up, uh, since February. So, uh, Pretty impressive, you know. We got kids out of St. Uh, St. Charles and some out of Texas and Omaha, and uh, they he's recruited well. The problem is they are they are very very disappointed in how the season turned out. Though they expected a lot more. Uh, we spoke to Gabe Demond, Diarmond, and he's like this. This is not what we expected at all. So he's uh, they're not happy right now. Coach, what are the challenges to recruiting to Missouri? I mean, I know it's not the most fertile area as compared to like a Georgia or Florida, obviously. Um, but what, what are the challenges of, of trying to get a team up there that can compete for an SEC East? Well, you got to, first of all, you got to catch the teams that are, that are, aren't on top because, uh, you know, I'm talking about he's in a new situation, a, a lot like uh, Beamer and uh, Heupel. Uh, you know, he's in his second year there in their first year, but, you really uh, got a long road to hoe uh, as far as facilities. As far, they've, they've done a good job with their new building there, but, uh, you know, they, they're not doing very good as far as attendance. And now they have a new athletic director. They let the athletic director go this summer, and they, they brought in a, another new athletic director. So I'm sure he's got to get some kind of feel for her because, you know, she wasn't the person that hired him. But uh, obviously – from my standpoint, the big thing for Mizzou is, you know, they don't have the D linemen that they had used to, you know, you always had three or four D linemen mm -hmm. look like they're going NFL, but mm -hmm. give them credit that first series. They just played the down and distance on us. And we, we, they had us overmatch. We couldn't block all those guys. I mean, I don't care how bad they are on defense. If you got eight guys, you're not going to Yeah, and they, they rushed four and still got to you. Yeah. When I think of Missouri, I think of defensive okay. linemen and I think of wide receivers. And they're not quite as good there either as they typically are. Yeah, they've had some good receivers. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia's yeah. recruiting like gangbusters. Yeah, there's yeah. a <laughs> there's a situation right there that sometimes your special teams let you down in a quick in a game you're supposed to win. You know, yeah. guys kind of take it for granted. You're gonna just kick the ball and, and the guy's gonna fair catch it, and especially with the win, but. That's like three first downs for that team to get a run back like that. That's about 20 some yards. 29 right? yards, yes, sir. Well, that's close. It's almost three yards. Almost three first downs. <laughs> first play of the drop for Missouri. A couple yards. It's not going to make a living with that guy right there, yeah. right now. I mean, Trayvon Walker again. Big Jordan Davis. Yeah. I don't. I know it's an optical illusion, Coach, but he looks bigger each week. Definitely big. <laughs> I mean, just each time I see him on TV, it's like he, he just looks larger. He's a good guy. He's uh, uh, Georgia fans are really going to miss him next year. So that'd be a good time loves, to just go ahead and win it all. Loves him some UGA. Oh, almost to Kobe Dean. Now, here's the thing for Eli Drinkwood. You're playing number one team in the country uh, over the 50-yard line. Hey, I'm I'm in four-down zone. Yeah. Run that sucker again. Run, run old Beatty again. I mean, they, they've got six yards and two carries. Yep. Plus, they got the threat of the quarterback keep. 8.02, 8.01, eight minutes left in the first quarter. Third and four for the Bulldogs. Quarterback, the quarterback run. He's got it and more. He is quick as a cat. Well, you can't play man coverage against this guy. Look, at, there's nobody on him. Watch it. Watch yeah. it. They went. You called it. 
Kanan Tindall's a fast player, too, and he didn't catch up from the back end. Yeah. You put a spot on him for the rest of the game, Coach? Well, you don't play man under. Yeah. Oh, wow. He dropped you guys, it. You guys showing me some skill level. I don't see that way he let the ball go there. I mean, yeah. it, it, he was trying to hit the quick screen, and it wasn't there, so he went to the second guy. Very nice. He's yeah. been watching Mahomes over there closer to Kansas City with that little sidearm release. Second and 10 for Missouri, 720 left here in the first. Back up the Oh, my goodness. Two missed tackles, Coach. Excellent run. Officials there, you will see the officials standing over the ball. If the other for just for if the other team that has the ball substitutes, you got to let the defense substitute too. So that's why he was waiting. Our guy got off the field because they Missouri put somebody in there. Normally, yeah. if you don't, then we'd have had too many people on the field. Right. Third and two. I can see a pass here. Go for a touchdown. Oh, make the tackle. There you go. Latavius Brennan. There was that phantom handoff that we we saw Georgia have a similar thing last you week. You get a missed hand miss misplay stopped him right there. Boy, that's fortunate for us. And Brainy yeah. needs to tackle the guy a little quicker, but <laughs> he's like, wait, wait. <laughs> I think he was just surprised there's no nobody he's, else there. He's like, I don't got the best field goal kicker. The guy has never had a I mean, the guy's hit like 18 straight this year. 36 yard attempt. Oh, I thought he missed it at no, first, but he snuck it down on the left side. So Missouri gets on the board and leads three to nothing. Well, all around the country, everybody's seeing this score and they're saying what's going on, but you yep. got to give this Missouri Tiger team credit. I mean, they're well prepared. They've yep. come in here. They've attacked our defense. They gotten off the field on uh, their own defense, and they had a special teams big play. Uh, uh, not so much what Georgia hasn't done as much as what Mizzou. I mean, uh, we work against this quarterback, but you 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 know structurally, when you run that kind of defense against an empty set. You can't let the quarterback run like that. Empty means no backs. So uh, they knew right away when our linebacker ran out with the guy in motion, they knew there was man coverage. And, I mean, Roddy, I think you could probably make 10 yards on it. Seven. <laughs> I think seven. But uh, you're right. There's a, a, a huge special team set him up. You know, we saw a missed tackle there. Uh on one of another one of his runs, we saw a couple missed tackles there. It's just a, uh, I, I don't know, I don't want to bring that up as a recurring issue because this is a well tackling team. But I think maybe a little bit of that cold, a little bit of that yeah, early I mean, start yeah, time, you just get the juices going. Exactly, you know. And it, here's the up. thing too: this guy's a great kickoff guy. More than likely, he's going to stick it in the end zone, and uh, we're going to start on the twenty-five. But uh, the thing that you don't want to have happen is from a psychological perspective is, wow, these guys are beating us. What are we going to do yeah. instead of, hey, we're supposed to beat them. Hey, they made some plays. Let's get going here. But don't play tight now, right? Yeah. Don't call the game tight. Let's get after them. Let's don't let every second they play with us, that's one more second they're going to play good. Right. But, uh, I know in the scouting report, we felt like that – having this young quarterback was going to be a big boost to their team because of his ability to run the ball. And he's shown a little bit of ability to throw it too. So by that, I mean, they're such a good running team with their uh, back. And now you add that extra dimension with the quarterback that can run, whereas the other guy was almost non-existent running. Then that puts a lot of pressure on your defense. That's, that sounds like I've heard that story somewhere before. So <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, uh, our friends over at Athens Ford have some pretty good deals. You know, I want you to check out while we're in a commercial here. I'll mention that they have the 2021 Ford Explorer and the 2021 Ford Mustang. You can get as low as 0% financing, uh, APR for 60 months for qualified buyers, or um, uh, you can check out the 2021 Ford F-150 or the uh, 2021 Ford Expedition. Again, uh, as low as 0% APR for 60 months for qualified buyers on those as well as part of their uh, holiday sales events. So, I want the Bronco. I've been wanting the Bronco for a while. Yeah, I don't know that they have the same financing deal on the Bronco. I, well, but if you just want to go out and pay cash for, for it, if you just want to go out and pay cash for it, I'm sure they will hook you I'll, up. I'll you know. tell them to send you the bill. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't realize the Ford Escape also has a 0% financing for uh, uh, 60 months for qualified buyers. So check out our friends at Athens Ford. Get a great deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle. All right, 550, and then uh, Missouri's about to kick off. Yeah, right now, there's an immense lot of now. pressure on Stetson Bennett. Everybody wants to see JT Daniels. Uh, things aren't going great for Georgia offense. Uh, he's probably talking about quarterbacks right here. So... Uh, Stetson needs to make make a statement on this drive here because you know it's just it's, it's just uh, the prevailing thought is what he can't do and what the other guy can do, you know. Yeah. And uh, we haven't done much yet, so I've cut him loose. Run, I just let him go right now. You, you got to get rolling here. I mean, I see some of the comments already, you know, complaints about stats and whatever. Georgia gave up those points because of a special teams error. Yeah. I mean, and, and the defense missed a couple tackles. Well, too, here we but, go with a stupid ass penalty start out the game. And the, the blame game doesn't make sense to me. We're halfway through a quarter. Georgia's yeah. had the ball once. I'm going to tell you what, you're helping them out. 550 in the first quarter is where we're at. Yeah. Now, first and 15 after the penalty. Come on, Warren Erickson. You can't do that, baby. Um, but, uh, they're, they're bunched up again. They're expecting that handoff on the first down. Three receivers to the left. That's well, more like <laughs> And again, I guess a stacked box too, Coach. Let's go get some tempo here. That formation clears out that right side. Ran on through it. 13 yards on that carry by Samir White. Coach, with a new left tackle in this game, I say new, he's played some, but with your starting left tackle out, would you lean more on the right side of the line? You just got to mix it up. You can't get too worried about who's in and who's out. Maybe in pressure situations, right side, but. Uh, there. First down for Georgia. This is going to be play action. Carolina's uniform. Oh. Carolina, Missouri. Oh, oh my goodness, Sam Howell. Not you need to call play. Mac and tell him to put those away. Well, they're hey, winning. They be Wake Forest, then that's okay. Wow. Good run. So this is going to be second and eight. Second we got to get a little more tempo here. All right, his helmet came off, so he's got to go off the field, right? Yeah. 435, we're in the first quarter, second down for Georgia. Four twenty four, four twenty three, four twenty two. Kyrus Jackson, Lad McConkey, Brock Bowers. Oh my goodness! Got to catch the ball. See, that's you can't throw it much better than that. Maybe a little behind him, but God knows. I mean, you hit a hit a receiver; he's got to make that catch. This is me third and ten. Good read by Stetson there. They played the back and the out. Bowers this comes is not George's bit. forte here. Off the corner. Yep. 
First down, well, Georgia. That's big. Get up. You don't point at the guy. Yeah, James Cook is in his ear about that. Wait, you see Kirby over there. Yeah. 15-yard pickup. Coach, that was a, a drop back pass. I mean, I know third yeah. and ten tend to be, but show pass as you call it. It's a good run there. Good route. 347, 346. Oh man. Uh, Missouri's gonna make him pass. We got a bootleg some here. Yeah. This could be some kind of crossing route to uh, Bowers. 313, 312, 311. Two tight ends on the left. Aaron there. Smith coming in tight. There's your great catch. Oh, you caught that ball? Yes, he did. Wow. Rose me. That's big. Good throw. Let's go fast. <laughs> it's just like, get the call in. Let's go. Kenny McIntosh with the carry. I tell you what, now stats, and I say this every week, you're gonna have to keep the ball here. They just they playing it. What a catch. Yeah. Lucky that I didn't get picked. Yeah. I'd say we gotta change our style a little bit on first down. And I mean they're they're basically loading the box every first down, coach. I guess they're yeah. waiting on you to run it. I mean, if you're You've run it three times on first? Yeah, they're set up for reverse, too. Eight in the box, down to seven. Mm. Going to have to do some play action on these early downs. Yeah, that was um, – they showed eight until one guy bailed right before the uh, snap. Yeah. That's 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 – Tough road to hoe there. 145, 144 left. So it's third and eight. Two runs by Kenny McIntosh, two yards. I call this Bowers territory, in my opinion. Oh. I'd go for it here. Yeah, I was about to say you're go for it, Kirby. Don't don't uh, keep I, the field goal. And if you miss it, then they feel like they've got something on you. You're in that kind of no man's land. Georgia is offense on the field. Oh, he's going for it all. Beautiful. Wow. Smitty, <laughs> tell me about it. How about that clutch throw? That was huge. Big, big, Good big call there. I'm glad Kirby went for that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I said, hey, you've got nothing to lose. Yeah, you're right. I mean. I mean, what were you looking at, a 50-something yard it's kick? It's really good to see Arian Smith do that. Good protection. What a big play. Can't throw and catch much better than that. I'm happy for Stetson on that drive, man. He had one yeah. dropper. I mean, it would have been – he did a good job taking care of the ball when he got pressure. I mean. Yeah. Look at that pass. I think I the, mean, ne the next thing we got to do is a little play action on first down. <laughs> Quarterback keeps. Two weeks in a row that Stetson has just that corner of the end zone. Yeah. Just on yeah. a strike. It's not Stetson is the ball machine. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see Arian Smith back out there too. Yeah. Good morale play uh, for your team to for your head coach to 
say, look, I hey, we you. got a good defense. If we don't make it, you know, it's a hard field goal. Hey, let's go for it. I mean, I mean, it certainly analytically is a thing to do where the ball was, no question. But, you know, it would have been a reach to try to field goal. But the call itself was brilliant because they're thinking, hey, they're going to try to go pick up the first down. Right. It got sitting, you know, ready to jump something, and then Arian breaks to the flag. I think the the one thing that that conceptually that's a big word for me <laughs> is the fact we'll that try it again. the concept here is with guys with that kind of speed in our lineup compared to what we've been playing with, you really help threaten the deep areas of the field throughout the game and open up so much of the underneath. We haven't gone to Bowers yet. We haven't gone to Washington yet. But you can see a lot of that opening up if they got to play deep. I mean, yeah. there, there's all kind of stuff we can do. But, you know, from just a tension standpoint, that was a great – that's like taking a Tylenol when you got a really bad headache. You yeah. know what I mean? Most of the time it works. But I'm just saying – everybody's saying a little doubt. Hey, what the heck's going on here? Georgia mm -hmm. not crushing this team. They've come out. They, they're ahead of us. And – Good answer by the offense there. Two right. third down, one third down pickup and one fourth down pickup. You're right, because you get that tension. And I've been on the sideline for many of these games where you're expecting a blowout and all of a sudden it gets tighter and you're like, oh, crap, what's going on? And every little thing is magnified a thousand exactly. fold. Exactly. And then something like that hits you like, thank God. Okay, let's go do this. And, hell, that may be all they score. Uh, Missouri, they got their one field goal, their, their win, and – the defense goes out there. The defense, like I said, woke up. The juice is flowing, I think, was your right. perfect descriptor because you're like, wait a minute, this this isn't going to happen to us. And you go out there and you kick someone's teeth in, and this is what that could be. And now I'm not yeah. saying that's going to happen, but just the motivation, like you said, the the stuff you don't see on the stat lines, that uh, your exactly. your feelings, you know, your how the uh, momentum, I didn't, motivation wasn't the word, the momentum. Now Georgia has it. Watch the defense go out here, get a three and out, and all of a sudden things change. I think we're going to have a hard time stopping these guys like we've stopped everybody, though, unless this quarterback has a little trouble uh, getting tight because he presents a real real challenge to us that we didn't see last week yeah. uh, a lot because, you know, they were turning the ball over and they got behind. But I think this guy is going to be a good practice game for us for next week for Hendon Hooker. I mean – the, the quarterback for tech for Tennessee. I, I mean, yeah, our so, game plan really stopped Beatty or bad. Beatty is what Beatty. I heard. Okay. B A D I E, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just being realistic. <laughs> this quarterback is going to present some problems to us. Uh, a quick note, uh, Jock Peterson was introduced here to a thunderous ovation out of the field. Just mention that. Uh, crowd breaks into the tomahawk chop afterwards. And um, I thought this was pretty interesting from uh, our man, uh, Brent Rollins. Uh, where did it go? Um, talks about just a sheer number of uh, – Aaron Smith in his career now has five receptions on eight targets for 188 yards and three touchdowns. First and 10 for Missouri, 42 seconds here in the first quarter. Georgia leads 7-3. to three. Tigers take the snap. Got a different quarterback in. Oh, yeah. I don't – Coach, would you have changed quarterbacks? Or was this just a probably a pre-game game plan? plan here? You notice we saw that the quarterback was in. But I like this guy in there. And I don't even know how good he is, but <laughs> – you don't have the less mobile guy in there. Maybe he got mad because the guy got went the wrong way. Or oh, look at that, uh, Javon Bullard up there. It's gonna be third and short for Missouri. That's the last play of the first quarter. Go to the so, second, Georgia with the seven to three. Who's that? As uh, 22, Javon Bullard went up and uh, pressed his man to the line. So he had the uh, – the guy, the guy that was on the hash, he went and mm -hmm. mauled him, but nobody else. Yeah, else I wonder who he's in for. That's what I was trying to figure out. They weren't in dime, were they? 
I don't think they were. Okay. All right, that's a seven three. I can take that. Hey, Roddy, why don't you tell me more about this uh, Bud Light Salter pack? Because we've got a second camera. I'm going to bring it up on here. Right. And uh, this this fall flannel pack, man. I tried it a couple weeks ago, and uh, I, I was. You can't try. You got to drink a lot of it. Cause I, I was astounded by that toasted marshmallow, that I, well, smoky I, flavor. Look, I got one of those sitting here right beside me. We'll see if uh, uh, maybe we get some folks in the comments section tell us where you are, uh, where you're watching the show from, and if you've had any of these, and you know, what's your favorite flavor. Uh, right now, I'm knocking back the apple crisp. I put some uh, ice in my cup. Pour the apple crisp on top of it. At the end of it. When I've drunk the whole thing, I only have I'll, I'll only drunk. Okay, drank. It would go. Drink it. I only be a hundred calories in. Uh, it's five percent alcohol by volume. So Noon on a Saturday. I can, got started early. I can continue to give you bad uh, analysis and bad commentary and really bad jokes. But when I move on from the apple uh, crisp, I will hit the uh, toasted marshmallow. Uh, I'm going to move on from there to the maple pear and the pumpkin spice. I'm actually. I mean. I don't want to be one of those. I think apple uh, pumpkin spice is stupid, people, because pumpkin's good, you know. And I get people make fun of the pumpkin spice lattes and stuff, but there's a reason it's out there. It's a damn good flavor. So try out the Bud Light Fall Flannel series. It's not around forever, you know. They have the 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 classic editions out. You know, they have their summer editions. They have the teas. Now they have the um, lemonades. That's what I was doing before uh, this week. Before it got cold, I was drinking the teas and the lemonades, mixing them together, having a couple of Arnold Palmers. Uh, just there's so many different flavors. That's kind of fun to try all the different ones. But this is a limited time deal. So get the fall flannel uh, variety pack. Try the toasted marshmallow. You'll thank me. Uh, give the uh, crisp apple to the apple crisp to somebody else. You know, don't get me wrong. It's good too. But you can share it. Well, and if seltzers aren't your jam, you've got the the classical reliable Bud Light here as well. So uh, there's yeah. plenty of options in, in, in what they have going on. Yeah. And again, Wouldn't this free. is made possible because of Leon Farmer and his company uh, that support our show, longtime supporters of UGA. Uh, Coach Don, and you talk about the, the relationship you have with them all the time from your coaching days and, and long beyond. Yeah, um, I mean, hey, you can't say enough how much we appreciate uh, – as Georgian people, what uh, Leon and his family does, uh, just do so much for the University of Georgia, for Athens community, uh, just really uh, community oriented. So uh, glad that he's on our show. I mean, he does a good job with it. Appreciate his mom watching us too. Marilyn, glad you keep up with us. Uh, get some of your friends there to watch it too, uh, watch it with you. So, uh, that's awesome. You know, it's one of these games here where you just got to go out and play. I mean, hey, everybody can find something wrong with everything, but got to give them credit. This guy, a quarterback, had a really good first period, and their special teams showed up. So uh, we got to get off the field here. That would really help. Our boy, uh, Blaine Gilmer's down on the field taking pictures. He just sent us a nice one of uh, Aaron Smith's touchdown catch. So be sure to check out UJSports.com for his photo gallery at the end of the game. We'll I'll have a start to begin the second quarter. Sorry, Roddy. No, sorry. That was nice of him to do that. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Weekly tweet about officiating. What's wrong with it so far? No, I'm going to say that's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, you poor girls. It's cold out there. Get some of those gold jackets like the uh, Golden Girls have. All right, so first play of the red. second quarter is now third and seven. Uh, a third and a little over medium. Pick. A lot different than third and Pick. Short. Pick. Where do you see it, Coach? Ooh, look at Kobe Dean run down. But Didn't even big, have to get bigger there. play by Keely Ringo getting off the block. Yeah, good job. You know, if I was Missouri right here, I'd fake this punt. Just go ahead. I mean, I'm <laughs> – why not? This is as close as you're going to be the whole game. Hey, listen, Drink, you're not going to block those guys on the perimeter. I can yeah. tell you that. I'd fake it. So, if you fake what do you want to do there? You want him to run it? You want to throw it? it? They oh don't my even have anybody on this side of the field here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. it is. Fall on it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, oh God. No, no, no he got the back. Safety. He, Dan Jackson couldn't stay on it. 
You well, kind of hey. wrap it up. Should have faked it. <laughs> Will we get a safety there? Or what? It's got to be what it is, right? Yeah, because it goes out the back of the end zone when it's your ball. I mean, you know, and here's the thing we watch those guys practice jumping on balls every time we go over there. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you, when you you need to slide into it and wrap it up, don't ever fall on the top of it. When you fall yeah. on the top of it, it's coming out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, me. Too bad. Was that Smith or, or, or uh, number four? Was it Smith or? Is that Mudman? No. No, 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 no. No. That's, uh, no, that's Nolan Smith. Okay. I thought I saw Junior in the back of his jersey that it's I had not seen before. Number four. Yeah. You know, we got two fours. That's okay, Dan. Yeah, because the only number four, the other four is going to be James Cook, and he's not a junior. You're right. You're right. So, I, it's, I thought I saw a junior on there. He may be a junior. But it's the first time I remember seeing it on his jersey. But I'm just glad that the other Smith is back. I pointed out in my 3 to one call, Georgia has four Smiths on the team. Three of them have been banged up. Georgia leads the country in Smiths and Walkers. Here's <laughs> what you got to watch out for if you're in Missouri. One of the worst things to cover is after a safety. Oh, and yeah. Do you kick it off or do you punt it? If you kick it off. You could say your prayers here. I'd punt it. Georgia now leads nine to three. This is going all the way. 14 12. Here comes Kyrus Jackson. Look at that seam. Oh, Got to get what? blocked. Kind of ran into the block Zamir White didn't make. You know, I've been wrong a lot in my life, but I could see us right here running reverse first play. Really? They've been flipping around there and getting, I could see us. To who? 11. Mm. Speed. They're over pursuing. Got the ball good field position. I'll probably be wrong. I'll be sure to tell you if you are. First and 10, 1406. You got it. There it is. Eight yards. It's a good tackle from 33 from Missouri there. <laughs> yeah, he did get like 35 yards if he didn't make it. He had a small window to, to grab, and yep. he did. Game will get out of hand if we can get this one here. Mm -hmm. George is dedicated to the running on early downs in, in this game. Twelve thirty-one ball snapped. Oh my goodness! Back to another third down conversion, coach. Coach Missouri corners are playing pretty far off. Second two though, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen, thirteen, 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 twelve. I guess they just don't want Stetson to hold, handle the ball, keep it. But get your power set in there and get the first. We're in the second quarter. 13 minutes left. It's third and one. Zamir White likely to get this ball. So you have Usually White what happens when you go on a fast count, you either the offense or defense. Is, that's it. There They're it offside. All right, run the reverse here. I'm going to say it every time. <laughs> If you keep calling it, Coach, it'll happen, and then you can say you're right. That's this, I don't ever say I'm right. I mean, no, well, I do, and so I call one thing 75 times, and I'm right one no, out of I've 75. I've said it twice. I was close on that punt. They're the you Tar Heels are. playing in their pajamas. That was a weird setup they did for that punt, too. First and 10 after the penalty. Darnell Washington coming in tighter. 12.39, 12.38, 12.37 for those trying to sync up at home. Oh, my goodness. Going deep. Burton. Jermaine Burton. That's why he put the number one guys in there. What a catch. Great job, Jermaine Burton. That's the way to lay it out there and give him a chance. Did Missouri go three out? Did it what? So I think Missouri went three and out, and then uh, Georgia scored pretty quickly. Yeah. And like you said, if they don't score, if they you put it away here, yeah. 
A little push off there, coach. <laughs> That's what, he deserved it though. He hadn't been playing. <laughs> <laughs> he but you know, talking about going into the game. Uh oh, oh he's, he's down. He, yeah, that's. <laughs> hey, when the uh ohs are, hey, it's it's going to be at the one instead of a touchdown. But so. you know, the thing about it, pregame, we're talking about getting some players. I mean, these are playmakers now. Yeah. I mean, come on. And then George Pickens and Gilbert. But I thought the offense couldn't be explosive with this guy. Well, yeah. it wasn't thrown quite far enough. So they he could have thrown a little more, but yeah. Oh, I'm not saying it was a perfect throw. No, no, no. You're right. No, I'm just saying to people. But getting those, I'm, I'm with the coach. I mean, Arian Smith, the fastest guy, maybe in college football. Jermaine Burton, you're not a George Pickens, but a top flight wide receiver. Yeah. This is a guy who took over for George when he went out, and you haven't had him most of the year. Yeah. Marcus Rosby Jackson, you saw how strong he was in that thing. What we need to do playmakers. Is, let's go with our power set here. If they got two backs in here and uh, whites in the fullback, they'll run 33 spin. Let's just see what happens there. I was open for the jumbo set. Well, uh, Davis and Carter. Washington's out there. That's jumbo enough. I guess it may be a, a yard out from what it needs to be for the jumbo. Well, I mean, how, they're, they're on the one. I don't know. He's probably going to do. I know you're right. It is the one. I thought it was a little further out. No quarterback keep little wing there to the left, coach. You can't block that guy when no. I mean, there's nobody to block him. Yeah. Second I mean, and goal. Smart by Missouri. I mean, put the Burma Road in there. Yeah. Put the power. There's set. your. There's there we your go. Set. Hey, I, I caught it, Coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took, took the easiest somebody, call of the somebody's game. Somebody's got a big blanket of Jordan Davis up there with his picture on it. I love it. Yeah, I, oh, my God. <laughs> Jalen Carter just cleared him. Hey, is, is that enough Burma I mean, Road for you? Yeah, I mean, look who the three guys over there, the the triple towers, Davis, Washington, and Carter. I'm just telling you, Jalen Carter is the best fullback in college football. Yeah, there aren't tough. many fullbacks in college football. That's my joke. Hey, can Jordan Davis get a handoff one day? Is that in the playbook? They showed the wrong play there, boys. Yeah, that's not it, gentlemen. How many guys? Georgia takes a 16 to 3 lead. 16 unanswered points. Special teams had an early error, but obviously came back for it. Got two points and got Georgia the ball. Which, I mean, I guess that was still an error that it wasn't a special teams touchdown and a safety, but worked out. I'm watching a lot of people uh, kind of keeping an eye on Twitter. We have folks that are watching the show with us. They send in a few questions. Uh, you What's can hit the up, question? You can hit up, uh, heal up some of those, but I'm watching people. Uh, Delete tweets in real time. This offense does not inspire. Nothing. This is boring offense. Now all of a sudden they're like delete, 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 delete. <laughs> don't give the, don't give into the hot take, folks. Just Alvin Woodruff. I, I don't really understand or agree with your comment here. You say it's a little concerning that we have to go with the jumbo package to get one yard. What else is the jumbo package for? <laughs> You what are you gonna use it on third and nine? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I I don't want to be. What do you have it for? The reason you do it is because you make sure you can make a yard. It's a little concerning to me that we would run a play on on first down where we don't have anybody blocking the guy on the edge. So what do you want? What's his first name? Alvin. Can't do it, Alvin. If you do, you got to get power. So and I guess he's saying like. Should have been able to score on first down, whatever. You could have, but it, it, I don't That's, know. It's just it's, that formation. What are you going to do? You can't block him with you can't block him with willpower, you know, or, yeah, or I mean, hopes he, and dreams. Quarter. It's it's all a guessing game. I mean, they. Yeah. I give them Missouri credit. They they've moved around and done a pretty good job against the run, but giving up two really explosive passes that. Make it hard. This is a. I, I tell you the other thing. The Missouri just question. I mean, if I'm a Missouri guy, why would you change quarterback? Yeah, I, I'm with you there. That's something that uh, Dan Bob's. 
I wouldn't have done it either. Jason Butt has an interesting theory, Coach. He said the safety actually turned out better than the TD for Georgia because Georgia gets nine points instead of seven before giving the ball back to Missouri. That's the way to be thinking, Jason. <laughs> it's kind of, you, I get you, it. You still want to fall on the ball and get I, I'm with you 100%, but I'm just saying that's a – Jason had an interesting take there. He's like, well, yeah, you get two extra points because then they make, kick you the ball. It might, it might make a difference when they went by 40 or 39. That does make a difference for a lot of people betting this game. <laughs> but I don't know uh, – I don't know if we can make it to that or not, but we'll see. Uh, if y'all have questions for Coach Donnan, drop them in the chat. I'll try to sneak them in here as we can. Uh, and let's get some questions. Yeah, and you can also, uh, if you hit the super chat, we'll be sure to put it on the screen there for you. So, um, it's glad to see the Missouri. I mean, the Tennessee game next week's at three thirty too. Yeah. What do you think about that game, Coach? Well, they worry me. I mean. They go fast and they throw the ball deep and they got a quarterback and run, but you know, their defense has been not real good, but they went to the fourth quarter against Alabama. I mean, uh, this, this, this game tonight is going to be huge for them. You know, how they come out of it physically, um, you know, they're going to be playing at 10 o'clock and our guys are going to be signing autographs out at, uh, at the, uh, yeah, classic city, classic Eats, yeah. city eats tonight. Go out there and get your autographs and get some good food too. Josh Collins set you up. Yeah. Here's a. <laughs> and Darnell's the other one over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that poor outside linebacker is like, come on, man. You got to go between Darnell Washington and Jalen Carter. Here comes the other quarterback back in. Yeah. Why is the clock running? Get lined up, Carter. Yeah. Good job, Nolan. Yeah. Well, that was a good job on Tremont Walters' part, too. Walker's a force. He's going to throw something to Y here. Did you see the Y call? Yeah. Watch your tight end here, sports fans. Even I can see that. <laughs> oh, he saw it clear out. God, no matter. Just somebody in the stadium. Is he in for Brini or are we in Dime? That's what I was trying to figure out earlier because I couldn't see the whole field. Can't have those. There was wide down the middle. Yeah. So I see seen. First and 10, there's 10.55 left in the second quarter. Chris Smith, Kendrick, Keeley. Oh, my goodness, intercepted. Oh, no. Was that? That hit Devontae Wyatt in the face. That's what it looked like. Was it seen or who? Seen. Oh, no. Okay. I thought. Oh, uh, seen. I, I thought it was the uh, Wyatt that was right there. Come on, seen. Take that one to the house. 10 48, second quarter. Oh, man. He is a runner. That's not even their first team guy, was it? I guess it was. Bad yeah. They can run that play when you're soft. We noticed we stemmed the other way and they went away from it. Good job. That Carolina game, 31 points in the first quarter. I think the wake way. 10 <laughs> 22, second quarter, 10 21, 10 20. First and 10 for Missouri. Cross midfield. 
Let him go. Too bad we didn't get the pick. They getting yeah. some rhythm. <laughs> I can see a lot of people voting for uh, Jalen Carter next time he gives in to either hand him the ball or throw him the ball. I guess you could, but what's wrong with just yeah. handing it to White? Yeah, I about to say, I about to say that works for me too. Maybe if you got third or fourth down, but. Carter's already caught one touchdown in his career. Yep. Former tight end. Hey, apparently, Julian Rochester got in the game. Glad to see it for that, Julian. That's fantastic. What's his sixth year? Yes. Well, it is fitting that on uh, Mark, the day Mark Rick is honored that one of his players is, is there to, <laughs> What's to, the last guys to he play for in? him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Julian Rochester is a great guy. Ben Cleveland may show up too. We'll see. Yeah. I remember meeting uh, Rochester in the uh, Waffle House parking lot off of Millage because he had just come up for a visit and he was willing to uh, give us an interview. And I'm like, so where are you at? Can I talk to you before you go home? He's like, yeah, we're eating at Waffle House. And so I t my son was with me and I t we took him and did a Waffle House in uh, parking lot interview with Julian Rochester. It was great. And, uh, now I just want to know how much Waffle House he could eat. He can eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think so. What are you drinking right now? Me, I'm still in that apple crisp, but I just finished it off. So that I'm maple gonna... pear is coming. I see it. No, I'm going uh, straight to the uh, toasted marshmallow. So that's going to be the next bet. Toasted marshmallow. Eh? Toasted marshmallow. Chuck Ward, long friend of the show, has a question for you. Coach, who do you see winning Auburn or Texas A&M later today? I'm going with A&M at home. Uh, you know, Bo Nix has been playing good, but he, he has a hard time on the road. The, the, these uh, Auburn receivers have been having an out-of-body experience the last couple of weeks actually catching the ball. They're about due to start dropping them again. I, I'm picking A&M to win that one. Jeremy on our Facebook page, he, it's a longer question. Essentially, he kind of wants to know uh, – the balance of, of Georgia trying to run early to set up some of these long passes, how does that work out in Georgia's offense? Well, I don't know that it really has set them up because they're running drop back passes. It only run one play action pass in the whole game. So it, the run game helps you if, if you're running the ball effectively, but right now we're just running what we call show passes where you back up and throw it deep. So, uh, I can see us running more bootlegs, more fakes, and then uh, some misdirection because their whole team is ganging up and just – which I would too. I mean, they're last in the country in rushing defense. You know, sell out on first down. Uh, they didn't They didn't probably realize we could throw the ball as deep as effectively, but they don't have a lot of tape on 11 and 7, yep. which are the guys that have gone deep for us and uh, really – Makes my mouth water know these guys give you that kind of a ability. You know, the other guys are good at it, but we saw Burton last year, and we, we've seen Smith, who, uh, again, has only touched it once today, but let's let him do it again. Keep throwing to him. Um, Jock Peterson on camera, World Series champion for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, he can afford Pearls. real pearls now. <laughs> Love the pearls. <laughs> Blue yeah, so, got his own spikes. I love it. All right, here we go. Second and eight for Missouri. There's 939 left in the second quarter, just into Georgia territory. Quarterback draw. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jordan Davis. My God. That was big. So, if I'm not mistaken. Guy's athletic. I mean, he should have been down. Getting the plays in pretty quick. We got to get set here. Got to figure they're going to go for it on fourth down. 909, 908, 907, second quarter, third and six. Passing Missouri is six of nine for 18 yards. Nice. There. 
This guy yeah. doesn't even look like he's running a quarterback mm. draw. He just starts running. Yeah. Good tackle. This is going to be their best play they got. Maybe yeah. a double pass or something funky. Some kind of option. When I mean best play, I'm saying yeah. the one that they feel like has a – Yeah, they're, they're, know, their best chance of winning. I mean, they're – or winning that 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 down, I should say. So, what did he draw up that he likes the most? Not. Oh, oh he escaped. Oh my goodness! He got him shot, down. That's gonna be, Fortunately, oof. I mean, inches away from a really that's going to be a close play. call. He didn't make it. I don't trust the refs though. But I you're mean, right. You're right. Get to the line. I yeah. mean, it's was George going to say it's George's ball. Okay. Who do you trust, Roddy? Ten's mm -hmm. good. Uh, my wife and my son. That's it. Mm -hmm. The rest of you guys are suspect as hell. Ten's a player. Yeah, he is. He's helped their team today. Yeah. I can tell you, they uh, looking at the Missouri message board. The fans are really excited about what he's bringing to the field. Hey, I would be too. Yeah, like, well, I'm not saying he's like Oklahoma esque, you know, when. Uh, uh, Caleb Williams got in there, but they're like, "Holy crap, where's this kid been all year?" So, well, excited. the thing he gives you, which we said in the preliminary is he he takes a lot of pressure off your uh offensive line because yeah. he can move around on the protection and then he he helps the uh running game because of his threat to keep it they haven't run a lot of zone reads but they've run a lot of just court pure quarterback runs but uh nice little drive there yeah. thomas is making Makes him think of Macon Bacon baseball team. <laughs> if I think of a Macon sports team, I always think of the Macon Whoopie. Yeah, that was a good one. I want some uh, Savannah Bananas gear. Savannah what? Savannah Bananas. Savannah Bananas <laughs> baseball team. Yeah. Back in the day, boy, you, you used to have the nickname of the teams. Was the one that they that they uh, they had for their major league sponsor. So you had the Greensboro Yankees, the Alamance Indians, the Raleigh Red Sox, and uh, man, it was great because you nobody here knows these players. But I got a chance to see Carl Yastrzemski when he was before he went to the Yes, Mets, and Dick Raddatz, and I mean, what a thrill! I mean. I went home and told my daddy, I said, I've never seen a guy throw a ball as hard as Dick Raddatz. You know, and then next day I said, I've never seen a guy swing like, you know, yes. But, you know, Ted Williams, when he was uh, in the service, did his training over there at the University of North Carolina, and he came over and played a, a game over there at our field. And he still they still talk about he hit the longest ball ever in that park. Wow. Uh, the thumper. Yeah, it's funny. They still talk about uh, um, Bo from Auburn coming to uh, Georgia and crushing one out of the Oh, park. yeah. What an athlete. Now now it's up to, you know, uh, I think 75,000 people claim to be at that game where he hit oh, the yeah. home run. <laughs> yeah, like, were you I there? Was there? Yeah, I was there. I saw Bo I was do there. It. I saw that ball going out. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. I love it, but uh, – yeah, Bo, Bo, again, just a ridiculous athlete, but, but they don't guy, talk about Georgia home runs. They still talk about Bo's. <laughs> the reason I was watching those games is one of my friend's dad was a general manager for the Alamance Indians, and we would go over there, and I went with him a couple of times till they started me, making me shine the shoes of the baseball players. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing that. Oh, I need a hat like that. Like Bill Walton. Yeah. Play action. You got him down the boundary. Oh, my goodness. What a catch by yeah, Kenny, Kenny McIntosh. Where's that play action on first down? <laughs> so, I get to the commentary, the setup, set, 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 set. I tell you what, you, may, you help your quarterback when you don't drop it, which we did earlier. We drop one, but when you make plays like that, it helps them. And you uh, drop it he right there. He dropped the second one. Same guy. 
can't play like that, buddy. You can't miss plays. That's not, just not with those other guys coming back into the rotation. Second and ten, seven forty-two in the second quarter. That might be his last play of the day. That yeah. There was a good job of the RPO there. We had a run and they had the corner blitz. And stop yourself. Oh, he's going to keep this one. Quarterback draw by old Stetson Bennett. Very poor run, Bennett. <laughs> You're in there to run it. Don't want going to make the first, man. That wasn't even a slide. That, that grass a little high. <laughs> Look at that crowd. Third and two in a packed it, Sanford Stadium. It's early and cold, and they're there. I love it. Yeah, I mean, they're all bundled up. And liquored up. No. <laughs> <laughs> you better not light a match over there. We're going to try the outside zone to the left here. But we're going to throw it to this guy. <laughs> oh, what a stiff arm. Did he run over a guy? No, he just shoved him into the dirt like he owed him money. You know, you can talk all you want to about quarterback, but that right there, he just – he just changed the play himself and threw it to him. Wait, no, Coach. I was told that he does not make good decisions and he does not do checks at the line of scrimmage. I was told this reliably by people who follow football, no. apparently. We can't run the ball on first down no. against that defense. They got 47 people in the Show box. us another play of that to Bowers. Here's the – look at your playmakers, what they're doing, though. I mean, you just look like an explosive football team right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're not explosive, though, Coach. Not until they get the other quarterback in. Well, and it's a variety of guys, too. I mean, yeah. you know, that catch from, from Kenny Mack, how many running backs can do that? That was a beautiful catch. We, I, got, I, we I, got one other that can. But yeah, James can do that. About time for quarterback keep on the goal line. Can't do it under center, though. Yep. You can boot, though. You can boot like to the left there. Backside guy got him, coach. Did the jumbo from back there. What they're doing is what we used to call butcher knife bandit. I mean, they're just sending everybody on the run. I mean, kamikaze style. Everybody just coming hard off the edge. So what do you do? Uh, fake a little play action there and let somebody uh, peel out to the uh, uh, far corner? I like seeing him run Bowers on a little – Take it and hand it to Bowers. Oh. Hope it's holding on them. This is mere wide open to his. Uh... Yeah, that's where when you have your pass protection. Oh, I don't want Kirby does not look happy. <laughs> Ooh. Seriously, why wouldn't you take the play if you're Missouri? What? Why wouldn't you take the play? Okay, they're going to decline it. That's better. Poor job there by George offense. Somebody should not have turned that mic on. <laughs> oh, no, they should have. All right. So, Jason Buck will say that was four points that we didn't have. <laughs> it was good. It's a 19 to three is the score. He's talking about the formations. Yeah. This is more than you know, hey, there, you know the thing about it, these games you're supposed to win so much end up being more chagrin than you normally should have. Boy, it just makes you think you got to use Bach Bowers. I mean, what a player. Got to use him. Got to use Darnell. 
I, how do you match up on those guys? I have no idea. I tell you, very, very good by him. Two plays there, seeing pressure off the edge and just taking and picking up and throwing it. One of them, I mean, we had two really bad drops by yeah. A.D. Mitchell so far. Got to think Burton's going to come in for him, wouldn't he? Uh, I, would I mean, hey, it's okay to drop one, but two. But of course, you're getting used to the cold weather too. But yeah, but that's there's too many guys behind you. The one, one of the need reps. Thing about football is, even though you're favored and all that stuff, you still got 22 guys out there, and this has been a good symbol to me of how things don't happen instead of how they happen. Drop yeah. passes. Illegal receiver downfield, illegal Miss motion, mm -hmm. uh, miss block, and the same thing's true for Missouri Tigers. So neither defense did anything on those plays, and the offense stopped themselves. So great point. Uh, it, it, that's the difference. The offense has the ball, and you got to, you know, you got to do it. You got to execute. But it's just, having coached a long time. It's just hard to get all 11 to do something good on every play. It's just too many factors there. I mean, <laughs> like herding cats, man. It's just too many things that can happen. Whether as good as you block it, you could drop it. As good as you run a route, you can't protect. As good as you uh, anticipate, the other guy's not looking for it. So, I mean, but that's all coaching. That's all playing. And you are who you are. And right now we got to be a little more effective as far as our own self. You know what I mean? We just got to. And the defense is learning some stuff too here. I mean, they're going to see a lot of that next week quarterback run, but the guys can throw a lot better. Seriously though, when you can be ahead 16 points and not have your A game, we take it. Yeah. I but I know one thing, I, I was riding with you, uh, really got some good uh, things going over at Athens Ford, don't they? Yeah, I was just pulling up their uh, page here, I was looking at their, uh, I was going to talk about some of the specials, but we mentioned that, but I do want to say their uh, used vehicle selection. We've got somebody on staff that was looking for a used car, and he's talking about going out to some of these lots, you know, went by Athens Ford, saw what they had, wound up... Uh, being being taken care of but the sheer number of people that do not have vehicles the, the used cars right now are tough to find the prices on them are through the roof check out our friends at athens ford they actually have vehicles they actually have reasonable prices they have a great sales staff over there you're not going to be you're not going to walk on the lot and you know 17 people land on you like a vulture this happened to me when i went out to pick up a rental car recently um went to one of the local dealerships because the rental car place is inside that dealership. Uh, me and my wife went out there, eight guys descended on us to sell us a car, which they don't have. They don't have any used or new vehicles. So they want to sell us their own vehicles, I guess. But point being, friends of Athens Ford, they have new and used vehicles. Check them out. Five, oh, five. The other, other quarterback now. Second quarter, first and 10, Missouri. He's screen. That's way to be in position there. Yep. Lewis seen racking them up. Big series here. Get them off the field and get another score. Just put them away. 443, 442, 441, 440. We're in the second quarter. This game here in North Carolina, they got 45 points. Good tackle. Wow. Again, I was talking about uh, that's, uh, that's Beal. Beal, Robert Beal in there for Adam Anderson. I mean, I, I hate that Adam Anderson's out. Uh, you know, don't – from a impact standpoint that he has, but it'll be interesting to see how Robert Beal handles this because this is a guy who was very highly recruited, very highly touted. All right. I'll, I'll be happy to be able to watch his film and see what he can do. And uh, get, hey, let's get see a lot if they snaps. attack the middle of the field again against this two shell.
Probably would have been a. Oh my God, they had him. He and still a little short. Yeah. Other quarterback would have made it. Go for it, Coach. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. He should have known where to down was. Yeah, turn off his mic too. <laughs> Drinkwitz is not exactly. Uh... So that's exactly what you were hoping for, Coach. Get off the field. We're in the safe here. Yeah. Look at all those guys. Kick you high, but he didn't dig it very far. Yeah, I, I, I would say for the nine millionth time, if they've ever been set up for the old number 11, they spank them on a reverse. You know, we watch Kyrus Jackson fair catch those punts week after week after week. And I don't think people realize how hard that is. Oh, yeah, he does a good job of it. That, that is difficult. This is kind of going to be a, a trendsetter for the f- second half because we get the ball first. We got all our timeouts and going against a team that's struggling on defense. You ought to be able to – we got Burton in there. Got a two-man route here. The there you go. Pitch. James Cook. Get a block down there, Schaefer. B- b- I would say Justin Schaefer way down there on the free we- safety. We we'll get another play. penalty. I'm gonna... Cedric Van Pran, the center, holding against Georgia, takes away the 16 yard gain. There's another case of it. Yeah, you're talking again. You said to I'll, me right, right here. here here's the thing about it. It'd be different if it was right up the middle, but it's on the edge. You got no reason to be holding in there. I wonder if we made any yard. Oh, yeah, we did. We made some yards. And I mean, it was down the field, so it's first and 14. That's not a killer. Gotcha, gotcha. Two and a half minutes left, second quarter. Good run. Wow, what, that, what Get a, a block dude. now. Get a block. Here comes Brock. He should have been dropped in the backfield, but what a cut. All right, let's go fast here. Hit the big one. I'm going to need that uh, gift when you get a chance later on. Just, or put it in the film, don't lie. But that, that this poor kid loses his shoes. Whoop! <laughs> I love it. He should have been dropped in the backfield. It's a way to move him. Okay. Still going with AD. Yeah, so stick it with him. I like the movement. I want to talk less, AD, after the couple drops you've had. We ain't got that much time here, boys. Now, make the first down. Wasting a lot of time here. James Cook up the room. What are you doing, Erickson? Get up. Run it. Get up. Go, 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 go. We don't want a field goal here. Oh. Old Jeff Coat, pretty good player. I'm going to bet his dad, Jeff Coat, played for uh, Cowboys. They had Jackson Jeff Coat who went to Texas a few years ago. I remember, uh, yeah, his dad was fantastic. Um, his dad actually set up an interview with us because everybody in the world wanted to talk to his son, and his dad's like, you call me, I'll let you talk to uh, Jackson. He might- Georgia was in on him, but I'm wondering if he had more than one son because this kid is fantastic. You check out his bio there. I'm, I'm about to look him up here. We should be up on the ball right here and snap it. Yeah. We don't need to be flip-flopping around with these seconds. So we have 121 left in the second quarter. Georgia leads 19 to 3. They're going to miss it here with Joe. Show us all these things with your hands, Joe. And, and that floral I tie.
Didn't say a whole lot about him. He's uh, out of Columbia, South Carolina. So Clock's running. One fifteen left in the second. God, what, what a, a ball. Woof. What a drill. <laughs> I mean, come on. But he can't throw, coach. Can't catch either. Try with one hand catch. Are they he, want the PI I guess? Yeah, he got tackled, so they're gonna last for a person. Where's Burton? I like AD. Yeah. Washington underneath. That's holding. Oh, yeah. Hold the collar. Well, yeah, he's holding he his arm down. He, he couldn't, couldn't, go. couldn't go, but my bad on your AD. He's holding your arm so bad. He, wow. What do you want? Conference office. It's five wheel, seconds wheel. left. Back to Mitchell. I tell you, the rhythm is good. I'm going to need – let's don't waste these three timeouts here. I mean, what are we saving them for? Run. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown. Oh, oh no. Get it in there, Burton. How did you not get in? What a good poise there. Is he going to have two plays? I mean, where he's seriously, on the right here, call your timeout. You got to call timeout. That poor kid. That's two times he's going to be on the one yard line. That's a play created from Stetson Bennett. I think it might be a touchdown. Review it. Come on, yeah, give him one. He's 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 been hurt all year. Give him a give him a break. <laughs> no. Backside was down. So yeah, to say his butt wasn't on the helmet quite far enough. Too bad. Stetson has would have three touchdown passes. Uh, he's gonna no. throw it to Davis. Do it. We're going oh, Wildcat we're, Cook. Look, look. Wildcat with Cook. Oh my goodness! We'll get that that wing touchdown. Good shift there, wasn't it? Yep. We told you about the Wildcat a couple weeks ago, but we went ahead and showed it today. Nice shift, wasn't it? Very nice job there by Munkin, wasn't it? That was great call. So Tavares King, I, I put out a tweet, Burton stopped twice on the one yard line. That's just cruel for him. And Tavares King's like, I feel bad for my dog. Another wide receiver to a wide receiver going, man, that's just not fair. Again, one of those games that Georgia hasn't played its cleanest the whole time, and you're about to go into halftime 26 to 3. But you also make a good point because I see people, well, uh, Stetson only has one touchdown. Hell, he'd have two if he Burton had got one more yard. Or he'd have three, excuse me, he'd have two more. That's a, I love that Wildcat, though, you know, with that uh, 13 personnel over there. Yeah. Here's the thing about it this guy here can throw it, too. Really? I did not know that. Which is pretty much my standard answer to all the stuff that you tell me. How about the way Stetson moving in the pocket that whole series of bounce around and the but Brock Bowers is just such a Brock is amazing. The offensive weapons really are what stand out in this first half to me. Just variety. I'm saying keep going to Burton.
I mentioned that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I'm I'm hey, I'm, I'm, I'm seconding no, your motion. No, I'm not saying. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm really happy with the uh, first half really because could have been a sheriff bill, which you know sheriff bill always said it could be worse. I just hope this coach keeps on. Playing, keeping making on the over in making. This is some kind of draw play to help the rushing stats. Ah, <laughs> so. unbelievable! Wow, don't get in a fight over there. Seriously, that is a Mike Leach call against Kentucky against us when he threw it in the flat and Bailey intercepted for a touchdown. What, can, what do you get out with 18 seconds to go throwing the ball in the flat to your back? All that can happen is bad. I was about to say, it uh, did not work so well for uh, some other teams I've seen. He's going to hand it to Bailey off the left tackle here. Here he comes, outside zone. Right tackle, my bad. Come on, coach. Unfortunately, he didn't make the first down, and the clock's going to run out. And that's that's all, folks. So play the school song right now. We're up. Sets a minute uh, is 11 of 17 for 232 yards, uh, one touchdown. As I mentioned, could be three, but he's a couple yards short. James Cook with nine attempts for 41 yards with a TD. Hey, while you're talking about James Cook, we have a super chat from Christopher Daddy I want to get to. Thanks for that, Christopher. He says, James Cook just added to the quarterback controversy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty in there. Well done, Christopher. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys. In about- <laughs> that's a good line. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, despite his drops, is the leading receiver currently with three catches for 38 yards. Uh, he's got, But he's been targeted seven times. He's only got three catches. Jermaine Burton's been targeted twice. He has two catches for 64 yards, so that's pretty big for him. Uh, they're accrediting Mitchell with four drops. Oh, that's a bit much. Uh, I remember two or three off the top of my head. Yeah, but I didn't I'm get up to four in my Officially head. on this uh, chart thing, they got him listed with four drops. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, McIntosh with a 31-yarder. Uh, McConkey with a 14-yarder. Uh, Arian Smith with that 35 yarder, which is pretty pretty impressive, and Brock Bowers with two catches for 39 yards. So, um, let's go to defense. Right now, Lewis Seen leading the team with seven tackles. How about Quay Walker back to back? Excuse me, weeks. four four tackles, three solo. I was adding them up. He has four tackles. Yeah, Quay Walker with uh, three again, so pretty good. Um. Georgia with um, a 23-point lead, about on average. But if you follow, if you work that out into two halves of the same, then they'd actually cover. So, I need a 43-point uh, second half for my prediction to to come to fruition. Although Missouri is already outscored, but what I predicted. Yeah, see, you got you got greedy. I didn't get greedy. You got greedy. I got sentimental. You got greedy. I got sentimental. Don't get yeah. See, and, and c- sentimentality jokes. about uh, people in your life is a bad idea. <laughs> Just don't be sentimental. Live advice from Rodney the Bolsey. Dude, hey, twenty. Uh, hang on, what's nineteen ninety five or something? Yeah, twenty. A long many do, years. Do I make the old joke now, or do I wait for the end of the statement? That's okay. I'm just saying it's been a long time since I. Uh, Got married and it's been very happy. A uh, shout out to Ollie Nabulsi and the cross country team at Athens Clark. Uh, excuse me, at Athens Christian. Yeah, they were seated tenth in the state and they got uh, sixth, so they outperformed. Congrats! So shout out to the ACS cross country team for kicking a little ass today. Good job, boy. He was honored last night at his uh, senior ceremony. So I'm um, very proud of him. I wish I could have been there today, Habibi, but I missed it. Anyway. Uh, you got anything else you want to add before we go to, go to break? Thanks to Athens Ford and Bud Light Seltzer. Yeah, folks, uh, stick. We were gonna, we're gonna have the, the second half is gonna be even more fun than this because uh, I'll get uh, even though these only have five percent alcohol by volume. By the time I've had a couple during the timeout, I mean during the halftime, and we get into a couple more in the third fourth quarter, 
it'll be it'll be a fun second half. Be sure to tune in. We'll talk to you then. We'll get you synced up then. Be right back.
quizzes is you have to create a very niche but super loyal audience that will follow you in everything you do. Exactly. But that's the value of, of our YouTube page, given the amount of subscribers that it is. So I heard you. Hello and welcome back to the UGA Sports Watch Along Show with Head Coach Jim Donnan. I'm Dane Young. This is Roddy Nabolsi. Make sure our mic is unmuted. Yeah. There we are. We are unmuted. It's a little delay. Got an onside kick. I knew it. Did you get far enough? Come on, Georgia. They got it. Give him credit. Yeah. That was a ballsy call. I hope that's been too. I hate to see Kirby at this point. 
Wow. Missouri football after the onside kick. And they're going to review it. Hey, while they're reviewing this, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and share this with your friends, please. What do you think, Coach? Best on the replay. He can't hit that guy. That's, we, we, that's going to be a penalty. Thank goodness. Yeah, number four blocking uh, Justin Robinson. Good job by uh, McElroy saying that. Here we go. Dodged the bullet there. Will they do it again? <laughs> I know they won't. That'll That's a good fun. lesson learned, though. Our special teams need to understand that you're going to see some people do yeah. stuff like that. And fortunately, we didn't lose possession. Good try, Drink. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a great idea. He saw it on tape, decided to go for it. I didn't figure out who 42 was on the reception team. He didn't have the name on the back of his jersey. It looked like somebody switched. Uh... Jackie Robinson? <laughs> I mean, in great number. Yeah. <laughs> Drake's like, come on, man. They're the number one team in the country. This, you got to give me that one. Try it again. One good thing about this. Might have a chance to bring it out. Oh, yes. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Our guy said we could bring it out if he didn't kick it out. Uh, oh, there you go. That's even better. <laughs> that's going to be on the 40. Yep. There are penalties. The, here comes the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Take a deep shot, coach, right? First play. Yeah, what do you want to do? You got, you got on their 40, got great field position. Here we go. Animated. All right. Well, he wants to be explosive, coach. So, what's your explosive call here? Uh, you can go with that reverse. Not much explosive on that. No. At this point. Not much movement. Let's go to Big O. It's going to be hard to throw it to him when he's in the boundary, though. 14-31, 14-30, 14 We're in the third quarter. They're wow. blitzing. God knows. You can't. He just said that they're being. Third and nine for the Dodgers. I think Kirby probably thought he should have pulled that, it looked like. Yeah. I don't know that that was a pull play. 14.03, 14.02, 14 minutes left in the third. George is second. Uh, two out of five on third down. This is the sixth third down attempt. Make it, make it. Go. Oh, my Atta goodness. Boy. What an effort. Boy, that's great. That's I awesome. I don't know if he's been 265 for a while. Maybe me in the seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. keep saying he's 265. I'm like, in what universe? Good Boom. catch. Good turn. Two. It's a way to know where the first down is up big yep. O. Two broken tackles. There you oh, go. There is the Kiers. Zoom. Yeah. 
So what, what what would you call that, Coach? Little Jet Sweet. <laughs> Peach County is what you call it. Your first touch. Every one of these guys act like they'll never get the ball again when they get it. <laughs> Darnell. Twelve forty six, twelve forty five, twelve forty four. Dogs knocking on the door in the red zone. Nice, nice block. First time we've thrown a bubble screen since long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was surprised that we didn't get a bad call there. I thought we yeah. blocked below the waist. They got the whole rules about the whole inside the tackle box and outside the tackle box thing now. That's changed. If you, if you make contact with the guy above the waist, but it, it was definitely a close call. Yeah. But good job by uh, Stetson getting rid of it quick and throwing it. Touchdown an extra point makes it thirty-three to three. Nice. You got a uh, APB out for JT Daniels. Yeah. So who threw that? Uh, I think Burton is a, such a really explosive guy. This is the best game of the year for him. I mean, I know he's had injuries, but no question. Yeah. Hadn't been playing, but uh, you, I think, you know, they got a chance of uh, actually covering this game. I didn't think so in the first quarter, but they got thirty now. You get two more scores, but only problem is we play our second team defense. They might jack us up a little bit. Boy, this looked like a different team. The way we're taking the edges and throwing mm -hmm. the ball down the field. I mean. I would have never thought we'd. Have, I thought we'd have been Oklahoma ground and pound, nineteen seventy today. We knew with their. I mean, we don't well, have a hundred yards rushing. Well, do we? I, I, didn't I ask you like why well, we would you? Up, why would you even throw it? <laughs> we picked up rushing yards there with. Uh, he's the leading rusher on the day now, isn't he? Actually, Jackson. Sure. Let me pull up the. Uh, game. That's probably the longest run of the year. Um. Jackson, 37 yards on that one. Uh, I guess yeah. Zeus had one. Uh, that's he, the other he thing. 35-yard at Florida. But I don't yeah, that's, that's the one guy that's got to come back in that's not really getting the ball much today, get him going. Yeah. Uh, Zamir White, nine carries for 14 yards. Does have a TD, though. Yes, he does. So he can enjoy that. But You know, one thing about Todd Munkin's offense, the versatility uh, – you got the jet sweep, which we've run this year with just then Kiaris, but you also got it with uh, Brock Bowers, who goes in motion and blocks a lot. And then you got the uh, counter type stuff, pitching the ball back to McConkie, or I guess they're going to save that reverse for Charleston Southern. <laughs> I was wondering if they were ever going to use uh, that Wildcat with James Cook, you know, like oh, save it man. for Georgia Tech. Yeah, save it for Georgia Tech. Yeah, well, it was a surprise. You talked about it a couple weeks ago. I said small surprise. That's small. Yeah. That, He's number four. Yeah. So I'm with you there. I think now is the time you bring in JT. Let him uh let him have a couple series and bring in uh Brock Vandegrift too. Well Carson Beck would be behind him technically. I think you bring in Brock. I'm down with it. <laughs> what did you say? I said uh, if you got to a third quarterback, who would it be? That's, a, that's where we're at in the commentary. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying if you know you let JT have a couple series because you know you uh, let him, like you said, knock the rust off, get get back out there, you know, get the feel for the game. Um, then um, after he does a couple series, bring in Brock Vandergriff, let him get used to it. Oh, Mr. Personnel. Well, I'm just saying his. Uh, I saw his dad yes last night. The Prince Who won that game? I'm going to have to talk about that. Was it bad? It wasn't good. How many yards did that back get? We're not going to talk about that, Coach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. But uh, here's no. the thing. You just got to be careful here and don't get greedy defensively and give up a little 
something. Woo. Man does it all. I was curious. I think yep. that's illegal, boy. I guess you. I guess you can do it if you line if he lines up outside you. We're at twelve thirty five. If, he, if somebody third. had done that to a Georgia player, I'd be all over like, hey, that's that's bullshit. Uh, you know, good. You know, he's getting off on the fact he got to block and help his teammate. Well, he he is a full team player. That's the you, second one about the same guy. He needs to get a Bud Light seltzer. <laughs> they got plenty of stick them. They, they got plenty of those from Anheuser Busch there in St. Louis. Yeah, ask Luther Bird about that. There's oh. Owen Condon. Good kid. All those guys are roommates there, those three together. Yeah. 1230 in the third. We really like Owen Condon. He's a great kid. Outside zone cutback. Ooh, oh my JD. goodness! Hadn't heard his name called yet, but there's your highlight reel. All right, you did your job. Come out. Yeah. <laughs> They're having fun. Yeah, they are. Eleven fifty four, eleven fifty three. We're in the third quarter. Watch for the draw. Oh my goodness, Trayvon Walker with just a crazy sack. He's had a hell of a game today, Coach. He really is. Started out the first half with three really great plays, and then that one. I mean. You don't realize how big this kid is. You don't. I mean, he's powerful. Uh, and just knocked the guy He knocked over. the guy onto his ass. That left guard winds up sitting down, watching him go past him. Get away Ooh, from yeah, him. Yeah, watch out, watch Get out. Get away from him. Gonna have good field position here too, coach. You think? I'm just saying. I'm, I like I like the chances of uh, JT coming in, not but his heels on the goal line. Well, let's see if the dog vent goes uh, a little a little berserk here. Apparently, JT Daniels is warming up to take snaps with Van Pran for our guy in the stadium with his eyes on the field. So that appears to be the case. And I think, coach, after you have a big lead. Have your starting quarterback go the first series of the second half, and then right. bring, bring in the next. Like that's pretty customary. And just for clarity, because I've talked a ton about this now. Like I like Stetson Bennett. And I like JT Daniels. I think they're both good quarterbacks. I I get frustrated that I feel like one gets more criticism than the other, and I don't think that it's founded. Like I think they're both good players. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, hey, you don't get the criticism either way, but uh, you, you just got to be obje you got to be a little bit more objective about Stetson and maybe not quite as your eyes with uh, through be on Bennett's st standpoint, seeing some of his flaws. A lot of people don't see those. Yeah, but they're both very good, and they're, I'm glad we got them. And with these receivers we got now. Uh, gonna be and tough. To, gonna be tough to stop Georgia. I'm just saying, this Georgia Bulldog team right now is uh, what you get. What you got to have to be a championship contending team because of the ability to throw the ball down the field. And uh, you know, our running game is better than it looks today. It's just you can't block all those guys. I don't care who you are. Yeah. And, and all you got to do is look at the results of the passing game, and it shows you who cares how you move the ball. You know what I mean? So good adjustment by Monk and uh, going to that. I love it. That's all the thing I've ever asked is, you know, when just use the same criteria to judge all the players. Right, right. We don't have – 
I was railing about that in the uh, timeout and just said, yes. look, use the same criteria yeah. for everybody. Politics. Preconceived yeah. thoughts are more based on yeah. what you know another guy can't do. And really, I think my deal as a guy that's coached four first round draft choices and quarterback play and watch it for a long time. There we go, Coach Rick. Uh, very humbling situation there. Did a great job for Georgia. They did. I grew up watching the the Rick there and 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 your era too, Coach. And both are very special to me, just as like kind of foundational memories of my yeah. youth. Um, but anyhow, the JT's thing about the, the quarterbacks is uh, JT Daniels can can really rock it, yeah. and so can Stetson. Uh, very comparable arm strength. So got Bowers on one side. I saw Rosemi and Smith lined up on the other. Bowers in motion. There's that reverse. <laughs> there it is. Get a block. Didn't need it. <laughs> oh, there it goes. That's the nice uh, Brock Bowers block there. Nice Arian Smith speed, too. It's almost like you've been asking for this uh, mm -hmm. reverse the whole game. Hometown Irvine, Texas? Huh? He moved. <laughs> you see that graphic? That's what it said. It did. I don't, I don't know anything about that. That's a Cali boy. 1029, 10 28, third quarter. Heard Kirby saying that they're still trying to be careful with Kenny McIntosh in practice because the hamstring is just so easy to, to re injure. Yeah. But. Uh Jump up and catch it one hand. There's Coach Cochran on the sideline. Well, I, just, I wouldn't recognize him. Ten minutes left in the third. It's second and nine for Georgia. Oh, Speaking I like of that, Kenny. I like that. Oh, why do you stop? Hey, there's throw a rat. How's that not a penalty? I don't know. You tackled him in the uh, first row of the stands. You Xavier Truss is walking over to be an enforcer. <laughs> Xavier Truss that. can't enforce. Playing some different offensive linemen right now along with uh, yeah. JT. Got Truss in it, right guard. I wish I'd go back to the field so I could actually see something. Third and three. Well, they got Warren in there still. Run the toss to the field. Oh, my yes. goodness. It's getting I chippier and our, chippier. Our plays to the weak side today, they've just outmanned us. Fourth and three. George is going to go for it. 846, 845, 844. For everybody who's rejoined us and you're trying to sync up your TV, we're at 841, 840, 839. I think it's Tress wasn't in there. I just saw him on the sideline kind of yeah, walking over. That was to... Van Pran. Yeah. Who's the timeout? Missouri, 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 Missouri called timeout. Called Coach, early, I guess, first drive, you had mentioned the going off the, the wristbands in the play selection. Explain to me the, the difference in that and, and the other options. Well, you got three ways, four ways to call the plays. The first way, it'd be just to send a guy in with the play and he tell the quarterback what it is, like split right 42 Bob. Then the second way is to signal it from the sideline where you say, Split right, 42 Bob. That would be a way you would signal it in there. Then the third way would be to give it to a wristband where you have a number on the wristband. So split right, 42 Bob, since it's an even play, would be number two. If it was 43 Bob, it would be number one. So 
wristband number one. So everybody looks at that and you see that. And then the last thing is just huddling up and they, I mean, running to the line and having a signal where you just have one word call when there's no signal at all. You just say Apache or Bulldog or Frank Sinatra or just anything, Atlantic, Pacific, you know, Atlantic to the right, Pacific to the left. And you just, those are four ways to call them. Are there, what are the benefits of, of I guess, the wristband? Just because the team can't get your signals. I mean, they don't have any idea what that wristband number is. And usually you change your wristbands at halftime just in case they're really smart. So really change. You have a set for first half and for second. Hey, these are some devious people. Man. <laughs> I never of that. Hey, I know two bastards. <laughs> I know two, two teams this year that have been caught sending people advanced scouts the you, week before and watching uh, other teams signals and, and getting them. Hmm. It's a pretty good yeah, advantage, you know, the play before the play. It, it it do it do help, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever do that? What get somebody to go watch somebody? Yeah. We did uh, when it was legal to scout. Okay. We'd send somebody and try to watch them. Um, we had Marilyn Cole when they had Randy White. Fortunately, we needed them with Randy <laughs> yeah, White. But to say that. That's a tough one there. Their defensive calls were easy to read. You know what this one was? Karate. <laughs> <laughs> Karate. I love it. I also love these Bud Light Seltzers. Uh, remember, folks, uh, they're a sponsor of our show. If you have a chance, pick up the Bud Light Seltzers. 5% alcohol by volume, 100 calories a can, uh, gluten-free, no weird aftertaste. Um, uh, football season is seltzer season, so I'm going to knock back a couple of these. Um, of course, if you... Uh, want to try the uh, fall flannel pack. It's the newest one. The, the cans have a flannel color on them. There's the apple crisp, the uh, toasted marshmallow, the maple pear, and the pumpkin spice. I'm going maple pear right now because I've already... Uh, take a drink of it for good luck here. We got fourth and three with JT in there. Let's see what he can do. Let's go, JT. Let's see. Let's... I, I hope he just kills it. I hope he lights him up. Do not want to see a uh, one out of one flare pass. I'm no football genius, but if it's me, I'm finding Bowers or Washington. And I could say that for every damn play. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, <laughs> you are a one-hit one wonder, man. <laughs> I thought I was a tight end guy. Jesus. He's looking at him. He's looking right at him. Exactly. You. Well, he, he went, went to the other one. He went to Fitzpatrick, but he, looked at the, he watched that tight Flag. end the whole way. He might have been offsides again. Yep, yeah, I think you're right. Good catch here, Fitzpatrick. Yeah. This you know, another a, thing that he watched, he watched Fitz the whole way. It was great. Another thing that Joe Gibbs taught me was, you know, the younger your quarterback, the less you want to have him thinking. So if he's got to be thinking about the signal, uh, relaying to the team, getting up to the line, checking things off, and also take as much off of it as you can. Older guys like these two, you can signal them in, but the younger guys, you're probably off using wristbands. Oh, I like to pitch the Kenny. You see I, that? I did. We're eight minutes left in the third quarter. Got big, big 65 in there. Yep. Buy some insurance from, he represents somebody down there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big old chillo, big old guy. I loved uh, Broder Jones pulling on that one. It's two pretty good backup tackles in there right now. Yeah, Roderick uh, Jones and Amarius Mims. Both of them five Ooh. stars. I just want to know if our fans think that Stetson is engaged enough on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> McConkey. McConkey with touchdown. a touchdown. Good job. Blocked by Fitzpatrick. Uh, nice much. Nice such a great story. Happy for JT. That's exactly what he needs. I think Georgia's got two good quarterbacks. Yeah, instead of he's for... engaged. He's going over there to hug him. Yeah. Good drive. So I think you'll start seeing more. I mean, we saw some of the reserve linemen come in, but I think you're going to see more. Yeah, more. let's see. Put him, bring in Big Devin Willick. 
I'm going to tell you a story there when I coach at Missouri because I have some stories from Missouri because I used to coach there. And since we're playing them today, I'm going to give you one. We had this guy <laughs> named Conrad Goody that was a really good offensive tackle. I'm talking about really good. I mean, he is a pro, ended up being a pro guy. But we signed a guy that looked a lot like Amarius Mims. His name was Big John Clay. He's mm -hmm. from St. Louis, and our line coach called him the masher. <laughs> well, anyhow, subsequently, I left Missouri and went to North from there to University of Oklahoma. Right. And we had a great defense there. I mean, just unbelievable. And the first thing one of our defensive players came up to me and said, Coach, you know, we were so worried that they were going to take Conrad Goody out and put John Clay in <laughs> to try to block me as a five technique. He said, God, that guy was a second team lineman for you. And then he ended up playing three years. But that just goes to show you the respect that they had for the masher, you know. Yeah. The masher, though, couldn't figure out that it was long distance from St. Louis to, to Columbia and had the $1,700 bill the first quarter. Oh, Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> We had to take care of that. Really? No, we had to find out somebody to pay it, but we didn't have to. <laughs> I don't think that was legal, but okay. <laughs> but master, you can't talk to your girlfriend long distance. Now you can, you know, yeah, but back exactly. then. The masher. Hey, can we get that same nickname for Trayvon Walker? He was just a he was just a massive guy. Big John, he could come off and really do it now we got some second team guys in the secondary yep all right Drew, what, fun I'm, I'm glad to see it uh kirby used to get we used to talk about it. he said nick would never let him put the first team guys in to the fourth quarter and he always worried about them getting hurt so yeah. i'm seeing kirby play the guys today and they're, they're they might get some points on us but that's okay yeah, just, I mean, you're. Hey, up, we got to be. You're you know, up 37 look, points. We got complete. We got Quay in there, but. Second and five for Missouri. Javon Buller getting work. Uh, Kamari Lasser getting work right now. Amir Speed in there. Good to see Speed back from his foot injury. I think he had a foot. Yeah, he hurt his foot. Hurt his, his ankle, yeah. missed three I, weeks. I, I couldn't remember exactly what it was. I knew he was out for a while. We're going to run the ball right yeah. inside here. Yeah. Make the tackle. Good job, Quay. Oh, my Quay. goodness, Quay Walker coming out of there. I thought he had the edge, Coach. Not against that. Don't be a penalty on us, please. Uh, yeah, Shit. Georgia was still trying to get lined up. <laughs> get lined Don't up. turn his mic on. Do not turn Kirby Smart's mic on. He's telling you to get lined up. I think Kirby needs to get more engaged when the game's out of hand, don't you? Yeah. I guarantee you, there's some some players and coaches ass chewed out in this game uh, from yeah. here on. From here on, somebody's gonna get some bad chew. Yeah. He is not a happy camper today. But again, you can't make those mistakes. Oh, good lord. Who is Latavius Brenny just killed a man? I'm glad he stayed low. Yeah. Compared to the, and he threw a shoulder. Is. His quarterback's pretty slick. The second team guy, he just having a little trouble getting the ball in front of people. But yep. this is going to be a difficult cover for the dogs because I can see them scoring a couple of times. At Unless we get a pick. Right now. Second down. We have 605, 604. We're in the third quarter. It's going to be. Way to go, Bill. Yeah, Bill out in coverage. That's a, nice. Have the uh, Missouri uniforms grown on you at all, coach, throughout the game? No, uh, they're very detesting. <laughs> <laughs> we played Notre Dame in a celebration of 50 years of Don Ferro, and we wore some yellow pants that weren't our regular colors. They were old Missouri colors. 
just completely regurgitated on the field with them. So Kamari Lasser and Javon Buller switching uh, players there. A little good communication. Wow, what a throw. That's what happens when you move around in there. Yeah. They haven't done a lot right today, Coach Missouri has, hasn't. Or they haven't had a ton of success, but I thought that was a hell of a uh, throw and catch right there. Find the ball, Tyndall. Yeah, Tyndall's working on it. Five minutes left in the third quarter. Georgia with 20 first downs to Missouri, seven. Taking Batty out of the game. Yeah. Get him ready for the last few games. They got to play uh, – still got to play the Battle of Columbia – and they got also Arkansas. Who else? Checking it out to be sure I'm right. This is some kind of run here, the way the guy's yeah. moving on the sideline. Sprint out. Georgia sub and even against this, it's unbalanced. They seem to be playing really, really off, Coach. I'm glad we are. Man, it just looks we like got a, a corner blitz. Good job, St that Jackson. Just made it look I like tell you, a very good, smart play by Dan Jackson. Wait, the last time to show that. Did you see that at the top? I did not. Well, we had a corner blitz, so the free safety's got to come over the top and play the the band. Right. And he waited the last second and disguised it, and the guy thought he could throw it inside. I was just looking, they were so deep, it looked like they were protecting for third and nine, not second and nine. Missouri has back to back yeah. home games, South Carolina, then Florida, and then at Arkansas to end the season. Ooh, I'm yeah. looking at one, one, and two. <laughs> we're coming on. They're breaking everybody. That's a good throw. Very good coverage there. Yeah. Don't do that. Just calm down, Kamari. Kamari Lasser wearing 13. Glad to see these guys playing the ball in the air here. Yeah. Drink. Much better this year about that. Yeah. Drink. What are you going to call here? Ooh, that's a tough one. He's looking through those sheets, Coach. He's got to find something to call up a big one. Yeah, I think he's going over the middle of one of these big guys. 350 left in the third quarter, fourth and nine. This, this middle guy in a slot is going to run – Either a hookup or a crossing route. I would say they cross, get a little rub. There it is. He's looking right at it the whole time. Get him down. Good oh, job, my Jackson. Goodness. Woo. Oh, that's a terrible what, spot. Come on now. What, what kind of spot is Challenge that? Challenge that now. That did not make it. Challenge it. I thought he got there. I don't think he did. I'd have to see a replay to know for sure, but I, I thought he got Watch, it. What, when they try to snap the ball quick, it'll tell you. Coach knows way more than me, so. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think he did. Conference office challenge it. That's why you're in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> this is the number one team in the country trying to make the – That's right. You go on a team trying to get the cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's about to say, you're very worked up about this, but you want that team. You want that cover. I like my boys to win. Did you ever? That guy did not make that. I, I don't, to me, it depends on where the ball is. Well, it's all of us are together. It's not like you're for the one thing and we're for no. another there to me. No, I was just curious. Did When you were coaching, did you know what the spread was? Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't coach around it. I, well, that was going to be my second question. Was oh, you knew it. I, I always like to know what it was just to see what I thought of the other team, okay. if, if I was right or wrong. But those guys in Vegas ain't wrong. No, nah. they're they're not very often. How about the coach uh, over there pointing to where the the first down marker is? 
it has always been my favorite thing in college football to watch the entire sideline point which way the direction the guy, guy's supposed to run. You see a guy break into the open, everybody points this way, even though he's been running that way the whole time. Army and Air Force, 14 to 11, fourth quarter. You know, they Let's for some Army. reason they play each other, they just can't score. They really have a hard time. I mean, Army needs to play Wake Forest and go score on them. Hey, you got to score on that uh, uh, North Carolina game, Wake Forest. I'll pull it up. Basketball. Yeah. I think the over under was like 80. 77. 77. <laughs> See, on this review, the only thing hey, nobody can... playing defense. Dan Lanning's fired up because he's from Missouri and he, he wants to shut out. Main touchdown. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Wake Forest, 38, North Carolina, 27. Hey, shout out to Elizabeth Homans, uh, Timothy Howard, Kevin Mills, Justin Farmer. Appreciate all you folks joining us. Appreciate you keeping the uh, chat running. Good. Uh, we well, got any questions? Dog 57, Christopher Daddy. He had the super chat earlier. Yeah. Uh, third quarter, Ohio State, 20, Nebraska, 10. Okay. Ohio State's not the world beaters. We may have thought they were. Hey, Ohio State's got to go through Michigan State and Michigan. Of course, We're having a hard time here figuring this out. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think, at least from what ESPN just showed, I don't think they have a great angle at that particular yeah, spot. Because I, I thought his right arm where the ball was, I thought that that went forward a little bit as the tackle happened. You were right. Yeah, I was yeah. wrong. Uh, shout out to Loy Dog. Or at least, I mean, they say it stands, so it's not confirmed. It's just that they had to go with what they called on the field. Yeah. So, I mean, it was close. Is what Those girls saying. there stand, too. Yeah. I've, so, I was looking for pictures of uh, to use for the, our score prediction ar uh, article that we did on Friday. And I realized last time I was up there, I took a lot of pictures of those girls. You know, for aesthetics and, you know, yeah, for, 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 clip, for clip art. You know? Definitely home field advantage. <laughs> <laughs> you got guys on the field looking sideways. 308, 307, third quarter. Oh, my God. He, he <laughs> Going away. Golden Girls almost got a catch there. He's yeah. outside the tackle box. I just want to point out, uh, it took me a minute to realize who that was. MJ Sherman was on the field, and a guy fell down and grabbed him around the leg, and they didn't call it. Well, he didn't go to the ground. <laughs> That right tackle, I mean, it's going to be left tackle, wrapped him up around his thigh. And they didn't these, call that. These officials are wanting to go to the they, – They want to get the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. They want to go to Five Bar and get some per diem. Oh, man, I want, I want to go back to Five Bar. That is such good food. Old Dan Jackson. Dan Jackson having a day. Still mad about that touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> From a what's next perspective for Georgia, a blowout like this where you can get your starters out, get as much rest as you can. Coach, you mentioned on Tuesday that Tennessee has a later game having to come back home. Georgia's going to be done at home by noon today. Start looking ahead to next week, and it looks like a, a fresher Bulldogs team. Sure. Hey, thanks for the super chat, Chuck Ward. Chuck's all, all world in Texas. He is. He's the best. Third eight. pick. Oh, no one's missed all that the whole way. Yeah. Kick and field goal, drink. Yeah. Actually, that might help me with my – I think my score prediction was close to something like that. Check out Smith here. I mean, come on. Jesus. That is a man who arrives with bad intentions. I mean, I feel like his last three or four weeks. Unbelievable to kick and field goal. <laughs> <laughs> I might be choking die, coach. You. He's got money on it. <laughs> a moral victory, man. <sighs> I did not think to see that coming. Guy hadn't missed one. That's a big kicker. Kick is up and perfect. Not quite perfect. No! That's was, what happens when you get from Mavis from trying to kick a field goal drink. Wow. That thing looked so good off his foot, and then it just kept trailing. It, it, it did. It looked like it looked, it looked great. Off the upright. And doink. Doink. 
love it. I tell you, when you're standing on the field and that that sound is unmistakable. Yeah, unmistakable. You hit it good. So I did not realize I have a kicker body. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I don't have that leg though. Mevis has a hell of a leg. That is, uh, I hope he does really well in the pros. Here's where we got to get a couple big plays. Yeah. Sebastian Janikowski had a great career. God, didn't he though? We're actually under center here for play action. <laughs> Had that Ooh. one down. So did yeah. Missouri. Yeah. You got to get your feet set and let it go, buddy. Waited too long. Second and 10 for Georgia after the incompletion. Throw it. No. There's the, Looking for power Nobody players. had him, coach. Yeah, I mean, Xavier Trust is in the game, by the way. Got Ed, Edwards in? Yeah, Off that's side. Edwards. He's going to be hard to tackle. Vroom. I do. your four team running back for you. Pick him up. <laughs> yeah. Burton's out there. Washington's out there. I tell you, if you come out of Colquitt County, you have played some football. That is a good blocking on the perimeter. Yeah. Washington and Burton. <laughs> I think we got uh, in, in center. We got Erickson in at center, maybe. Left-handed okay. center. Yeah, you're right. That is in the center. Oh, um, so interception off of the deflection. See, I, I hate that he will be charged with interception there when the ball is tipped. It you know, bounces off somebody's hands. It always bugs me. Threw a little bit behind him, though. Yeah. Watch it. I just... Yeah, it is behind yeah, him. You're yeah, right. I can't pass. But still, you know, it's just, I never liked it when a tipped ball is. See like, where the ball is there? I mean, yeah. yeah. You're right. See Austin Blasky on the screen there. You might see him in the fourth quarter doing some snapping. Oh, yeah. Because he's the third string center. Another tough kid. Wrestling state champion. A lot of wrestling state champs on this team. Oh, man. I mean, they're going to wherever Dan Jackson is right now, aren't they? Here's the deal, though. I mean, we'll throw all those five-yard passes you want to in this 40-3. to three. Get one of those moral victories drink. I don't worry about that. Yeah. Buster Faulkner telling him, back when I was playing at Valdosta, I never <laughs> went through one behind him like that. There's John over there talking to him, too. Defensive coach talking about offense. Hey, shout out to Trevor Lloyd Dog, Thomas Fanazva, Indy Clip, and uh, Bonnie Torres. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nope. <laughs> Who was that pitch to? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you think they're listening to that guy right now? Coach, we're getting the dog <laughs> shit beat out. If you, hey, if you just do this and you do that, yeah. Hey, we got to turn it over. I'm just telling you, you're talking about going, you know. The, the, I'm going to tell you one of the funniest things. I've been trying to do this for three years, and I'm going to do it during this commercial. Or right, while they're doing one, we'll do it. Do we need to do one? Do one, and then I'll tell it. Tell uh, thanks to it. Bud Light Seltzer and Athens Ford. Now your story. <laughs> yeah. When I was coaching at Marshall, uh, the Cowboys on an open date that we had played the Cincinnati Bengals and Switzer was a coach. So I asked him if I could come to the game and take my son, Todd, who's playing at Marshall. And I think I took my daughter, Tammy and somebody else. She didn't go on the sideline, but anyhow, we went to Cincinnati and we were there in the first series, they took the ball and they threw the ball to, I mean, they, they handed Troy eight was the quarterback Smith was a running back. You know, they had Michael Irvin. So Michael Irvin went, uh, didn't catch any passes, and they handed the ball to Smith the whole time going down the field. Right. So they come over to the sideline, and Michael Irvin is raising immortal hell on the sideline because they're not throwing him the ball. Of course. 
So the next series, they go out there and they throw it to Michael Irvin about four times and they <laughs> get a field goal. And they come over to the sideline and Emmett Smith is going bizarre, going crazy. Why aren't you giving me the ball? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so the next series, they go in there and they give it to, to uh, I'm serious, give it to him again. And they go down and kick another field goal. And the wide receiver on the other side, he said, look, I've been in here three series now. You had not thrown me the damn ball yet. They're ahead 17 to nothing now. Right. And so I'm just looking at these all-stars griping and listening and talk to each other. So the defensive coaches, uh, Butch Davis was one of the defensive coaches and they had a defensive line coach and had this great defensive end named Charles Haley. Oh, yeah. And the coaches over there, just like that guy was right there, and he's just giving them down the road, telling them everything. And he and he, he used a couple of bad words. But I'm gonna say, Wait, he, in, he, in professional football? No. Haley said to the guy, he said, look, you don't need to say anything else. I'm just going to tell you. You call anything you want, anytime you want, any down you want, and it'll work if it involves <laughs> me. You understand? And he got up and walked away. He said, call anything you want, any down you want. If it involves me, it'll work. And then, he, you know, like, coach, don't get on my ass. I mean, he just said, <laughs> so that was that was the pro, pro players. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the coaches were just – I don't even know what the coaches were there for. I mean, these players are just going nuts over there about getting the ball. And Haley said, you run anything you want. I, I'm going to destroy that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good story for you. I hope y'all liked it. I love that. But see, that's the type of stuff we never, you never hear about, you know? Unbelievable just to, that they were worried about getting the rock. And so I went over to Troy. Two, two Hall of Famers. So I went over to Troy, who I'd coached at Oklahoma. And he said, coach, I got to put up with this every week. Three Hall of Famers. I get it. I, that is – you bring up a good point, though. The guy is kind of you know, want, want the ball. And every time when you have a loaded backfield like Georgia has with, you know, all those talented running backs and you have all those wide receivers, all those tight ends, we in the media were like, well, what? this guy didn't get the ball enough and this guy didn't get the ball enough. And you changed my mindset because you're like, look – in this game, when you didn't get enough first downs, of course, no one's you're not getting the ball around. Right. Enough. You got to have, if you have 45 plays, everybody's going to be pissed. You get 75 plays, it gets a lot better. Exactly. We're in the fourth quarter now. It's third and five. Great first call. down, Missouri. We're going to see that next week with Hooker. Yep. Just can't play man coverage against a running quarterback uh, as much as. Without a spy, but I can just tell you right now, we need to. It's gonna be a miracle to cover. Probably not gonna happen. Need a pick six or something. Still some hard hits out there. All these guys are playing. I hope it's holding. Yes, there sir. It is. You said in the first quarter these offenses were getting in their way. Missouri's still getting in its own way. Right. Part of it has to do with the uniforms. <laughs> we're not going <laughs> to let that go hard yet. <laughs> I mean, hey, there's the best damn dog in the world. Next, next to mine. Next to Brown. Have you ever seen Brown's uniforms? I've not. Ooh, ugly. We ended up having to play Brown one time at Marshall, filling in the game, and uh, they came down there from the Ivy League. Nice kids, nice coach and everything, but just completely out, man. But their uniforms were really bad. I'm talking about Ooh. awful. Wow. But not a lot you can do with when your colors are brown. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> Cleveland Browns do okay with they it. They do. I want to get it's amazing to me the way Wake Forest can fake up in the line of scrimmage like they do. You know, we talked yeah. about it when we had the quarterback that came here for a little while on a, just just a drive through. Cup he, of coffee. He, he yeah. was here, but hey, Jamie Newman had a Waffle House meal. This I, is, God, I should have taken the over. I should have taken the over. You how didn't. Did I, how did I not take it? Still got to score once more. Well, there's more than 19 seconds left. I think they'll do it. Hey, let Wake keep winning in the next week or two. Hey, I want to give uh, William Poole credit on that last play where he blew up the uh, – uh, They got to have receiver. people downfield there. Yeah, you're right. 
uh, William Poole blew up the block and um, made that pass almost impossible there. So, what's he? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Yes, sir. I'm glad you know the numbers. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do know I do know William Poole's number, I will oh, say. Oh, that's good. Hey, I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks for admitting that. Oh, no. I, I know most of the numbers, but, like, there was a 20 out there, and I, I'm like, I don't know who number 20 is. Which and, one's a 2 there's not a 20 on here. Which one was that tuba player there? Uh, that is a 7, unless you've been drinking. I was talking about the tuba player in the I, band. I'm saying he is a he is a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. It's, this is going to be one of those Kentucky marches here. Yeah. Dan Jackson is going to be bruised from head to toe, but he is a ball player. I don't know why this coach is playing this guy over Macon. That, Macon is your future right now. Guy's making three million dollars, though. He knows his, knows his team. That Delgado is a big boy. Jeez. All right, 12.30, 12.39, 12.38 in the fourth quarter for those still sinking. Appreciate everybody staying with us. Oh, that was a great fake. That's what you call navigating the hedges. <laughs> Guy's pretty slick. Reminds me that of looked it. like one of those plays that Gus Malzahn used to run, where the, the guy that played here, defensive back, and played quarterback for him. What was his name for Auburn? Was it uh, Nick Williams Nick, or Nick Marshall? Nick Marshall. Yeah, yeah, you know where he'd fake and then run down yeah. the line and still throw it, and there'd be twenty guys downfield. Oh yeah, he former Georgia back. defensive back Nick Marshall. Yeah. Quarterback draw again. He called it up. Yep. Bill Norton. Of course, watching the guy come that close to running into the hedges reminds me of Aaron White actually just taking a full header into the hedges and five people having to pull the Georgia's tight end out of there. He was. He went right into it. He went right into it. I mean, it's basically it was like a cartoon. All you saw his little feet sticking out the end. Well, little. He's a big boy, but I miss Aaron White. He was always a great interview. We need to do a Patrick Garvin is a where are they now type story. We need to reach out to him. Second and six, 11 28 left in the fourth. Hey, we played it. Yeah, played it that time. Look at Bill Norton with the tackle. One of your Tennessee uh, defensive linemen. Georgia has a bunch of those guys. And Robert Beal in on that tackle. Robert Beal's going to get a lot of playing time in the, in the, Interim. He was already playing a decent amount, too. Yeah, but they're definitely going to need it next week against uh, Tennessee. That's and he, why and people are like, why is Kirby Smart so mad when he's up 37 points? Because it's not going to be as easy next week. Well, you start projecting ahead. Tennessee got a solid team. That offense presents some issues. Yep. Uh, beyond that, in the regular season, yeah, then you got two. You, you got Charleston Southern, you got Georgia Tech. On paper, both of those are going to be blowouts. Yeah, two garbage games. But, you know, you're working about that first week in December when you're going to take on. Alabama, Auburn, but, but how much of a luxury is the schedule with that? Because Alabama yeah. can't do that. Alabama right. will have Auburn coming. I don't yeah. know where that game is if it's in Tuscaloosa. But here's the thing: I mean, Texas A and M could be there too. If uh, I'm just that, saying, in that be... final game of the season, Alabama's oh, yeah. got a tough matchup on the field. Yeah, because I don't care what the records are or who's got what to play for. When it's Alabama and Auburn, they make it first. A quarterback care, keeper. What else? Yeah, <laughs> that's all they're running right now. First and ten. We need a fumble. Let's shout out some of these names that are out there yeah. on the field. Uh, okay. You got the roster. Got David Daniel out there. Daniel nah, the one you're seeing right now is 78. That's Nazir Stackhouse. Oh, now I see Greg McElroy and Joe Tess mm -hmm. and his flower tie. See how many times Joe Tess uses his hands here. Watch his hand movement. Give us some hands, Joe. Three, four. Oh, oh he another one. Took the roof off of it. Open them up now, Joe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you got Chaz Chambliss in there. Oh, and the sack by who? That? Oh, uh, Juman Dumas Johnson. As a boy, he had a pick early in the year, right? He, yes, he did. He had a pick six earlier in the year, and then last week he almost had a second pick. Yeah, good play. He was the one that had the video leaked of uh, in a scrimmage of him making a ridiculous uh, INT. I was trying to see who's playing nose tackle there. Uh, 97. 
Uh, Warren Brinson. 272. Come on, drink. Kick another field goal. Yeah. There's, there's not a 72 to my knowledge. Oh. We'll try one more field Look goal. at Chaz Chambliss just waiting. Chaz is about to die. He's 32 at the bottom of your screen. Here he comes. With a spin move. Get half of it. Yeah. Question is right now, are we going to play man or zone? See, this is where most people don't think about that. They're like, are they? you think about the offense, not what the defense is going to I mean, to right here, I mean – are we going to try to go after the quarterback? Or are we going to try to get a regular pressure and play the ball? 78, so that's all. Drink going for another field goal. God <laughs> almighty. <laughs> I mean, this guy must have – his his mother must have some bad pictures on him. No, oh, you got to tell him that you, that you love him, Coach. This you missed a, one. We're going right back I to I wish you. we'd block this. It's going to be on bad beats. Georgia doesn't score again. Kirby's probably over. There. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Coach. That's that's awesome. Boy, you're really coaching them up. What is a what, what? Onside. Somebody kick. on our score prediction picked six amongst our staff. I have to look at it. I'm just saying. See. Coach, I, I had a question with the second team defense there because I know with the first team that Nicobe Dean is the one calling the signals out. He's got a lot of responsibility from that spot. Assuming that it's Channing Tindall that does that on the second team, because I saw him out there, how much of an advantage is that that your second team's led by such a veteran? Oh, it definitely helps because he's been in there and he can settle everybody down and tell you. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you get a call, you have a tag with it, which which would be a, a one rat or some kind of two man with the bump, and and you and you say watch the, and it'll have a tag with it watch the quarterback draw or watch the uh, outside zone or, you know, and, and uh, a younger guy would just probably just get the, the, the uh, signal. You know what I mean? He would just, he would just call the signal. Whereas a veteran guy is, is talking to him based on their alignment, based on the call. This is what they do tendency wise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That might be too much for me to say, but no, you, you want to have that kind of leadership back there with your secondary too, because, Teams do have tendencies, and you play percentages. I mean, unless – I used to always tell our guys, they could do that, <laughs> but if they do, we'll worry about it. Until they do, play the percentage. What can they do from how they line up? You know uh, – play the, play the likelihood. And the, the way I used to say it was estimate the offensive intent. What are they trying to do from how they line up? So tight formation, they're probably going to try to rub you off, uh, you know, as far as a bunch route. Uh, wide splits, they're probably going to try to run the ball uh, with the wide receivers taking wide splits so your secondary can't cover. We used to have an OJ call, you know, OJ Simpson before all those things happened to him. Was great at he running. He was not guilty. He was great at running the ball. You know what I'm saying between the tackles. So if we said OJ, then that reminded our team that it's probably going to be a quarter, uh, some kind of tailback run. Hey, yeah. Twitter world. <laughs> now, I think you're. Hey, end of the third quarter. I'm giving Ohio, you all our secrets here no, from 1990. Was, Ohio State 23, Nebraska 17. Non cover. That's at the end of the third. Not going to make it. I get a little dicey. I'd like for him to lose for Mel Tucker. A lot of Cornhusker yeah. fans right now around the country. The okay, Brussels you talk about a place to play that's just an unbelievable atmosphere, a cathedral for college football, Lincoln, Nebraska. You walk down that. Wait, you say nice stuff about Nebraska, Coach? Yeah, I mean, you walk. the fans are pretty good, really. You walk down that. <laughs> to the field and they got these little ropes that they put up in between the fans and you. And then they let the fans come back in and you would go down through that rope, man, a lot of people walk through there. Not many got two wins like we did. Oh, you, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we, we were down and we ended up winning that game at the last, last second with Keith Jackson. And when we're going through the press box it's like a morgue. Oh yeah, the coaches because all those Nebraska writers are just homers, worse Absolutely. than any place. And and uh, no, no, they're not worse than Auburn. Probably 
probably Auburn. But I'm just saying it was just a great <laughs> thrill to be be running through that press box to know that you just chapped their ass so bad. Because yeah, you're up there as the offensive coordinator. You walk out, you're about to go join your team, and you walk mm -hmm. past all the uh, journalists who are like, oh, my God, what just happened? Yeah. It seems like Nebraska just has such a hard time recruiting now. Yeah, I was – I was going down the. You know how the coaches go down the press box. Hey, we're filling people. It's forty three to forty to six. <laughs> yeah. So going down at the end of the half, you know, and you never know who's on the on the thing with you on the and uh, it always stack. You know, there's a lot of people on the elevator. You know, so right. they don't. These people are talking and and the guy was saying uh, something about our quarterback. You know, he said, "Hey." Not, that quarterback doesn't impress me much today, you know, like that. And I didn't say anything when I was walking out. I said, yeah, too bad he's like 14 out of 18 for three touchdowns. But maybe he can play a little better in the second half. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't fair that you had Keith Jackson. Come on. Yeah, he was, that, he was good. That's really not fair to Nebraska. I mean, that's. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a difference maker. Army and Air Force are in overtime. Really? 21-14, Air Force has possession to try to tie it. Come on, Army. Uh, Wake Forest. Not against my Air Force brethren. Don't I, I love you folks, too, but I've had too many family members, spend too many years in the Army. I got I, I to gotta stick with What's my What's that Wake score? Wake Forest, 45. North Carolina, 34, late in the third. Ole Miss, 27. Liberty, 14, fourth quarter. Trying to see if there's anything well, else. If they if they kicked off and we got the ball on the twenty five or what's happened? I don't know. This nothing. This either. is a long delay here. Third quarter, Georgia Tech twenty eight, Miami twenty four. Going back to Miami. <laughs> I made the comment, I, I really uh, Roddy, that. on around the league this week that Manny Diaz had apparently uh, been saving his job over the last couple of weeks, and quickly Coach and Brent said, "No, it's a week to week thing." <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they are correct. I do want to address a lot of people keep saying that Dan Mullen's going to lose his job this year. Dude, slow down. He is not going to lose his job this year. He's going to fire some people. I don't know unless, about all that. Unless he loses tonight. Well, that could be true. Yeah. As it stands now, I don't see it happening. But I expect him to win, win a few games, fire some coordinators, and then be around. But Yeah, who, who's what's the score now? 40 to 6. If we score, that'd be 47 to 6 and yep. be 41 points. Yep. And that would be a cover. Did they onside kick or what? We got probably trying to kick another field goal. <laughs> I would like to see us just doing something kind of funky here, like yo-yo pass or. I, I expect a eight-minute yard, uh, eight-minute uh, clock-eating drive. We don't have any way to run the ball in these guys the way they're lined up, though. All right, first and ten. Got some young receivers in. Burton comes a little tighter for blocking. Edwards. Jeez. Everybody's going to know why isn't he playing. <laughs> why don't we have the same controversy about the running backs as you do about any other position? No, I just said that as a I joke. I just, uh, kind of What's the question? Me. How many coaches on the 2015 Alabama National Championship team are head coaches? I saw someone tweet this out earlier this week, so. Quite a staff there. Five. Kirby Smarts, Nick Saban, Mel Tucker, Mario Cristobal, and Lane Kiffin. How many Jim Donnan former coaches are head coaches in the NFL? He's got him in the flat. Oh, man. You got to throw his sidearm, buddy. He's too he, short. He's too short, yeah. If he was taller, he'd be able to make that throw. What are you talking about? Something on your 42-1 report when they uh, <laughs> batted passes or something? Yeah, see, that's going to be my fault. I'm going to get blamed for that. You mentioned batted passes. It's your fault. I just say they both uh, – Hadn't had many. That's quite a rainbow ne there. Neither one had had a lot of batted passes this year compared to last year. Both have halved, cut in half the number of batted passes they've had so far. Why well, do their graphics say that Lane Kiffin is their offensive coordinator? He was offensive coordinator for Alabama when he was working. Oh, 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 oh. I missed. I thought they were saying that he was like, dude, just play caller. Just feed Colquitt County. <laughs> wow. I tell you, the the Edwards recruitment says a lot about how Georgia's gotten to where it has because that's a guy that Dale McGee worked on for a long time. And yeah, but but he was like their second or third choice. But what he did was he kept him hot. 
Yes. Yeah. The kid kept wanting to come here and we didn't have a space for him. He said, look, if you'll just wait. So he kept waiting and he believed in coach McGee and it turned out he wanted to come to Georgia and we got a spot and Dale yep. stood, stood up on the table for him. Yep. And he's going to help us over the long run. I mean, he's good Absolutely. on special teams and he's going to get blown up right here. Yeah. You're running into a lot. Wait a minute. Got a boy, lad. A nice throw there, JT. Good catch. That's good protection there. How about being my boy, 77? Let's watch him. He, he's my next good player here at Georgia. Devin Willock. I mean, the Hillock. Look at his size. I hope that we got Broderick out of the game and letting him rest because we're yeah, going to need a line check here. See, so Xavier trust him. These people aren't worried about showing us the line. We still Nine. got Broderick in there. Yeah. And we got a, we got two starters in there, Erickson at center, or is that no, last Erickson? Game? That's Erickson. No, wait. Yeah, it's Erickson, Mims, Truss, Willock, and Jones. That's your starting five or current five. There's going to be some people get a standing ovation if this guy scores. Oh yeah. For the, you know why? Oh, I know why. <laughs> C O B E R. Yeah, exactly. There may be some reserves that Georgia's got to think about as hey, far as redshirting. Twenty three is we ain't yeah, worried about games, the, we ain't worried about the future. <laughs> we got hey, Savon Clark is in. Coach. We got the future. Who? Savon Clark, number twenty, running back, walk on. Nice. That's how you make the first down, Marcus Roseby, Jack Saint. Remember, there's a few weeks where they would get they. They need nine yards. They go stand eight yards down, catch the pass. He yeah. got his feet past the first Look at one. those big old Chilardos right there. 77, 73, 59, and uh, 65. The field is tilted toward Kirby. Not one under 320. I like Muschamp's glasses. Half up and half down. <laughs> they, they're making Ward Erickson look little as the center. Don't tell me you're going to hit Seath or underneath. No, I'm going to write a Savon Clark. Hold on to it, buddy. Seath is who I was seeing. You know what I'd like for him to do right here? What's that? Use the whole 25 seconds so they don't give the ball back to Mizzou so they can kick another field goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never seen anybody root so hard for the cover as I <laughs> – no, I tease you about it, but this you're right. Guy, this guy's got – you know, hey, we – We've been a covering machine except for Kentucky. I mean, you broke right. a lot of people's hearts. I mean, Vegas thought they sent an aggressive spread to. Honestly, I thought that was a bit much. You're going to score too quick here. So, Brett Seether, you're right. That's 80. It's going to come down to a fourth down play here. Use the clock, JT. Kirby, you got to be happy here. Now, come on. Smile, Kirby. No, there were there were mistakes. It can, it's not I mean, acceptable to have one. Nebraska now has the ball down the score. JD. And driving. Look at that big old boy right there. Hey, here's some news, Coach. Uh, Walter Nolan is committed to Texas A&M. Wow, that's huge for them. Yep. I guess that's what happened when we get bare. Exactly. Make him miss you. Run right over him, Seether. It's going to come down to a fourth down call here. Right. So, do you want to cover or do you not? Surely Kirby wouldn't kick a field goal here. Be funny if he did. <laughs> Be a lot of people pissed. Yeah, they would. If they don't score here, I don't think they'll make it on fourth. You know, you could really think about JT if you'd run the zone read keep. Nobody in the world think you're going to keep it. He's going to try to throw. Didn't have anything there? Crap. Was he throwing to Edwards there? He's throwing it to Uga. Yeah. Here we come with a field goal. Unbelievable. You know, Kirby ain't running up, not going for any uh, spread. No, nah, he is not. 
But since this winds up 37 and the line was I don't like know why you kick a field goal here, though, even if even non spread. I mean, just maybe a just, rep just I, to get Pod Lesney more kicks in the stadium. I'm just running to get more clock off. Good kick. 43 to 6. Now your score. Well, next week, guys, we have a third down call was Jack Nicholas. Throw the ball and Brett Seether. But that's the way it goes. I'm not going to be just. We had a good game, really played well today. A lot of, a lot of really positive things, and hopefully nobody got hurt. <laughs> Next week's kickoff is at 3.30. Georgia back in primetime CBS. And we will be on about 3.20 for UGA Sports Watch Along show. I will be here. I know that's what everybody was waiting for. And you've seen the comments. You know, all the questions are, will Roddy be there to uh, drink Bud Light Seltzers at 3.30? Yes, I will. Following week is a noon game for Georgia yeah. against Charleston Southern. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I have no that problems. That game with there, I don't know. It's on ESPN Plus or something. Yeah, I think people are just going to have to watch us because they're not going to have ESPN Plus. We'll have to it, tell them what's going on. Alternate on. channels. Yeah, that's the one I'm gonna miss. If you're gonna miss one, that's a good one to miss. That that is. Going out to see the Oklahoma clan. I'm gonna go get that Caleb Williams scouting report. Could be a possible playoff matchup. I'm gonna see Caleb play against Iowa State. Oh, Nebraska missed a field goal. You yeah, need to get talk to Drinkowitz. Please get it down there. We can try one more drink. Missed a 31 yard field goal that would have put him within a field goal. Wake Forest now at 48 to 34. That Wake Forest offense. Yeah, they got to play Boston College and Pittsburgh. I mean, don't they? Who else do they play? Uh, NC State next week. And then Clemson and Boston College. They got Clemson still? They have Clemson. Mm. Is Clemson playing Louisville? Is that game started? That game is at 7.30 on the ACC Network. Thanks. <laughs> Good luck finding that. We're going to try on sidekick to try to make the cover. <laughs> so it is uh, 46, I mean, excuse me, 43 to 6. Jed May predicted 45 to 6. Well, he's fired. He's he wrong. is fired. He yeah. you can't get it right. Can't can't be here. At least I made a joke in mine. It brought yeah. joy to the world. Uh huh. Yeah. And am I also fired? You, dude, you're not even hired. Yeah, okay. I said it'd be forty-five to three. So Georgia. next week, if Georgia wins against Tennessee, it would be Georgia's first undefeated conference season since 1982. And it would be the first time in school what? history okay. that Georgia has won eight SEC games in the same season. They would have done it last year, but Vanderbilt decided not to play. Yeah. Good stat. So some school history to be made next week, potentially in Knoxville. Tough place to play, Knoxville. You know they're going to have that grass grown up about 45 feet. And somebody will get a knee injury. I like to see uh, somebody get a pick six here. <laughs> Wake and Pitt. Any score on tech? Oh, they got Macon in. They gonna let him run a few here. Uh, tech still up twenty eight twenty four on Macon can throw a pick. Oh, almost there. <laughs> I don't understand his quarterback selections. Huge upset for Brett Bielema. That's what happens when you sign a new contract. P.J. Fleck just signed a new five-year contract, $5 million a year, and he gets his ass beat by Illinois. Wow. Quarterback draw. You think it's coming? Yeah. Good tackle. 
Call time out, Kirby. No, just kidding. <laughs> just, having, <laughs> just having some fun. <laughs> we could get the block. Yeah. Hey, both of these guys are engaged. Dude, they're talking about the... They're just uh, trying to figure out where dinner is tonight. No, they're talking about the pork chop, by the way, at uh, Five Bar, which is fantastic. They're talking about, hey, what's going to be on that next 7-6 uh, Apparel t-shirt that comes out for us? Yeah. I do want to give a shout-out to our friends at the 7-6 the Apparel. You think he'll you think he'll pun here? If okay. he goes for it and we stop him, we might break one. How no, long is the you, he won't. He'll take a knee. Kirby won't score. He's going for it here. Tackle him. No, that's your ball game. So 43 to 6 will wind up being your final score unless they're going to try to uncork some stuff. So uh, that's a bad beat, I'd say, right? That may make yeah. Scott Van Pelt and Stanford Steve later on. Shout out to Kevin Cook, Johnny uh, Andrino, catch. Johnny Lester. Jesus. Of course, Jermaine King, my boy. <sighs> Eric Peel, Timothy Howard, Cat Dog. Uh, Jermaine King, um, he said he predicted 46 to 6. Oh, wow. He needed one more field goal. Uh, Sumter LB. Oh, Miss Beat Liberty. He freeze on the burner account. <laughs> so, about those. Uh, Escort services, Hugh Freeze was calling. Did we ever get a number on those? I wonder if he's going to call a timeout here. What are you asking? I'm just wondering if the FOA would actually show his results. Uh, just out of curiosity. I mean, you know? did you file that yourself? I'm just saying out of, out of a journalistic uh, in, uh, inquiry. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Nice catch. They're going to get a chicken shit last second score here. God. What if Kirby uh, ran at the first team defense? I was about to say, put in the first team defense. No, you can't do that. Cat Dog, thanks for the compliment. We love doing these shows. We love the challenge we watch. Put them. in Julian Rochester. Pick six, run it back. Nah. Quarterback keep. Lay down on him. Lay down on him. Just lay there, yeah. Lay down. Is he going to call timeout? Oh, if he calls a timeout, this is going to be insane to me. Yeah. He did. He called a timeout. He's an egomaniac. That's the third time this so year that's say, happened to Georgia, that people are calling timeouts to get pity TDs. Uh, the Sheriff says, Roddy, give a shout-out to the Valdosta Bulldog Club. A lot of them are listening right now. Yes. That's a good club. They are fantastic. We, we gave them a preliminary pick on the Georgia. We told you everything was going to happen. Didn't we, Roddy? Yes, we did. They are very good to us. I mean, Roddy did. I didn't, but. No, we absolutely did. I told him some good jokes. You did. <laughs> the, uh, Just remember the Mockingbird. <laughs> we can't. Do not tell that joke. I'm not. I'm going to keep this monetized. Hey, keep keep that going down there in Valdosta about 14, the Mockingbird. 14 Mockingbirds. Right. Sounds like I should have gone to Valdosta. You should have. That was that was a hell of a trip down there to Valdosta. I love of course, Valdosta. We had done, seriously, uh, right here. Seriously, if there was a cover situation at this point, and this guy was doing this, it would just be incredible. But it's not. So, I tell you, this Wake North Carolina game probably might go into infinity. It's forty-eight forty-one with eleven minutes to go. I'm going to go up and watch the end of it. Come back. You're not going to sit around and talk about us. I mean, after our <laughs> stuff finishes. Hey, we, we can begin to wrap now. Yeah, if no, we want to. So that way, when you really when, should go watch it. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen up here. I mean, I want to watch Auburn and uh, TCU because A and M. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Auburn and A and M. You're right. That is a garbage timeout. Any respect I would have had for him has just gone out the window now. Big thanks to. I'm just Button. gonna tell you right now because you did that, we're gonna get Luther Burden. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be a pain in your butt. The fact that we're going to put all our recruiting efforts on that guy. And just to show you. Just to piss you off. Kirby's going to rent an apartment in St. Louis. 
I understand they've got some uh, good NIL opportunities up in uh, St. Louis, but there's some bloody good ones here in Athens and uh, the Atlanta metro area. No question. Speaking of NIL opportunities, uh, there are a bunch of folks going out to Classic City Eats this afternoon from 6.30 to 5.30, excuse me, 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, Nicobe Dean, Jordan Davis, uh, Pickens, George Pickens, a bunch of guys are going out White. there. White, Zamir White, James Cook. Uh, they're going out there to sign uh, autographs. So if you are in Athens or you are in Watkinsville, head by Classic City Eats, you can you have to pay for it, but you can get autographs from guys that you just don't it's normally see. It's some good food. Great food. Uh, just a shout out to our friends at Classic City Eats. They are hosting it. They're not the ones putting it on. They're just gave, they're giving the venue. But it's a great place to see, and there'll be some games you can watch. Huge TVs everywhere. Six thirty, eight thirty at Classic City Eats. Um, great food. We do the we do the podcast there every Tuesday uh, at noon. So just want to give them a shout out. You mentioned the the seven six. You guys were wearing their apparel last week. Shout out to uh, uh, Chase and the folks at the seven six with their great uh, attire. I kind of wish I'd been on last week's show when I could have worn some of your cool stuff. But I want to give them a shout You're out. Drunk too. on the beach, we get it. I was. If we stop them here and they call time out, I'm going to really pass out. Let's see Zion Logue just break it off right here. He's not. He's just going to keep it, right? No, Zion, man. get in there, Zion. Let's see if he calls that timeout. Coach. Called it. He did? Yep. My goodness. <laughs> that look on Kirby's face. I mean, teams are trying to get some pity points against Georgia and working hard for it. Put your first team in. Wow. Hey, this show's not possible without Bud Light Seltzer and their support. And Look at Lanny. You think you're playing for a national championship? <laughs> yeah, he's like, she's like, screw that. You know, it's some kind of quarterback play action here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. He's been going straight up. I guess uh, the way they're going to be bunched up, maybe he rolls out. And yeah, you know, this happened a few years ago with up at Tennessee, and Brainy made a play. Maybe Jackson will. This is quarterback rollout. He's going to fake yeah. it inside, and he's running to the left. Yeah, he's got some blockers up there, yeah. There he is. Yeah! Oh, goodness, William, William Poole. Poole. Don't call a penalty. That was fourth down. Yeah. They are not going to give up a touchdown. Well, hell, the problem there is – It's an incomplete pass. Clock stops. Now it'll be fourth. Kick a field goal. <laughs> field goal. <laughs> I was talking to uh they Chris. gonna they gonna put eighty two in motion here. There's eighty two well, in motion. That's, that's no, thirteen in play. Oh, I thought it was gonna be the leg game. Yeah, behind him. That's some cosmic karma. Jermaine King with the super chat says, "I hope Kirby cusses out that coach and then grabs him so Muschamp can also cuss him out." <laughs> okay, fake the kneel down and throw the ninety-seven yard <laughs> bomb. Arian Smith, J.T. Daniels. Kids love it. Good for them. That feels like an extra win. Auburn now, did the same stuff, though. I mean, Harson and now Drinkwitz. And, and, and Kentucky, Kentucky, even worse. Yeah. Stoops, yeah. That's three times that's happened. The moral victories. Just don't take a safety in the end zone. Good game for JT. One yard. <laughs> Final score, Georgia wins 43-6 to over Missouri. The undefeated top-ranked Bulldogs will head to Tennessee next week for the final 
SEC regular oh, yeah. season game of the year. Hey, hey, hold the thing up, act like you're not talking to him. Yeah, it's really funny. All right, uh, quick stats. Coach uh, Stetson Bennett was 13 of 19 for 255 yards and two touchdowns. JT Daniels was 7 of 11 for 82 yards and a TD. James Cook was your leading rusher with 41 yards on nine carries. Jackson had, of course, Keir Shexton that 37-yarder. Uh, Edwards, three carries for 29 yards. So he's doing very good, uh, almost 10 yards a carry there. And uh, your leading receiver, you had – Three guys with three Kirk, three catches. Jermaine Burton, uh, A.D. Mitchell, and Lad McConkey. Okay. Burton had 76 yards on receptions. And that 47-yarder did a pretty good one. So, yeah. Three catches on three targets was pretty good. It's so, amazing. Can't play dead. Um, Missouri... Uh, Got 273 yards, Coach. Way to go. Let's see what Kirby says. Georgia had 25 first downs to 15 for uh, Missouri. You always talk about third down conversion. Georgia held Missouri to 6 of 17. One third. You continue to write the book. What did today's chapter tell you about your team? A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. You know, we got one more home game, and uh, next chapter should be better. Congratulations. Thank you. So what he says, Greg, just write the next chapter, make it better than the chapter before. All right. So they don't cover, but they kick a lot of butt. Uh, again, kind of a slow start, but they got a little bit of slow start. I think they surprised us with their defensive, you know, the way they stopped us early and we weren't able to get any uh, rhythm in the running game, but the passing game was good enough to really get us going. And just can't say enough about the, the way these different young receivers uh, have played for us all year, but now the veterans are starting to come back in and make an impact. You look at Burton and Kiaris Jackson and uh, Rosemary. I mean, those guys really help your team. Right. So uh, you got to be excited about getting those guys back, seeing Arian yeah. Smith out there. You know, I forgot got... about mentioning Arian. He's a younger guy, but just that was a big play in the game because at that point we were struggling and to get yeah. a touchdown there was huge. And, you never know when Missouri's going to kick a field goal. I mean, <laughs> and, and just uh, really do a good job of trying them. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I mean, what kind of signals that send to your team? I mean, hey, you're playing against number one. You got to go for it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. So it's those little moral victories like, hey, let's not get shut out. Let's, that's one let's thing, score but twice. Hey, that's one thing. Let's get but a garbage not, touchdown. I mean, who cares what you get? I mean, your offensive coach, your offensive team, you go for it, man. You go yeah. for it. That's just, I think it, like you said, if you've gone for it and you hit one, you'd be able to say, hey, we are one of the few teams to score a touchdown on that Georgia defense. Yeah. This I is mean, another I, week I mean, no one has scored a touchdown. He's his own guy. That's okay. I mean, yeah, he, I he, thought he did a poor job managing his quarterback today. He had a hot guy going and he took him out. And never resumed anything any close to the quarterback runs except quarterback draw a little bit. But uh, have fun with that uh, quarterback controversy, Mr. Drinkwitz. I uh, hey, uh, appreciate everybody that tuned in with us today. There have been a ton of them. Um, it, it always makes us very happy to have all of you join us. Uh, as long as you keep joining us, we'll keep doing it. Please hit that subscribe button and hit the uh, little bell thing so you're notified when we go live. We're bringing more and more to this YouTube channel. We got some other stuff in the works. We can't do it without your support. So please hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Well, we yep. also need some uh, reviews on our podcast. That's big. subscribe to our podcast channels. Just search uh, UGA Sports Live in Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, if you're an Apple Podcast specifically, if you'll leave us a five star, we need about review. 200 reviews. It what are those? Like, what do you mean? Somebody say they they say they like or dislike the podcast because a lot of times where when you are listening to one, it'll have a suggested next podcast for you to listen to. 
the more reviews we have, the more likely we are to be put into that suggested column. So I would like uh, more people to review it. So oh, okay. Uh, so we could. Uh, it moves us up in the algorithm of promoted materials. Yeah, let's suggest that we listen to our next podcast on <laughs> Tuesday, where we'll be breaking down the Tennessee game. And I yeah. hope people realize the amount of content that like we're churning. Though, we're and I'm not to. just saying that like to pat our pat ourselves it's on the okay. back. You can do that, but like. We've got the Tuesday podcast, uh, which is the flagship. Uh, we've got the recruiting yeah. podcast. The recruiting podcast on Monday has been lights blowing out. up. We've got around the league during the season My on Thursdays. Uh, we're Coach and I and Brent Rollins talk about the other games in the SEC. And and then the one right after this one. Yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah. something for everybody. Right. We're, we're a buffet. Yep. Can't wait. Dear Trent Smallwood bust old, uh, our quarterbacks today. <laughs> I'll get on there. And I'll, Quarterback I'll, guru Trent Smallwood. I'll be on there to make fun of Trent and uh, anybody that argues with me. He does a good job, but does. I I completely disagree with his analysis of our quarterbacks. Well, so do I. So that's why I yell at him, and he yells at me. So I disagree stuff. with Roddy, but not on the quarterbacks. Just most everything else. Yeah, that's that's fair. All right, folks, uh, we're going to wrap up here. Thanks for watching. We will see you next Tuesday at about uh, three twenty.